All right, what's up, guys? Uh, before we get into this episode and the new ad read, I would like to address for those of you who are watching right now why I look like Mr. Rogers sitting in a comfy little living room. Our podcast studio is under construction right now. It's going to be so money. You won't believe it. This awesome new sign is going to be there, and it's with me right now. But we've got an awesome episode today. But before we get into that, we would love to give a shout out to our new sponsor, our presenting sponsor for the podcast, Shift Hockey. Truly, guys, this is one of the most exciting sponsors we could ever get, something I absolutely believe in and something the hockey world needs. The guys at Shift Hockey are on a mission to save the hockey industry from rising prices and so-called innovations. All that bullshit that they say, the bells and whistles, the lightness of the stick, all this and all that that you're getting with Bauer, CCM, all that, it's it's nonsense, and they're charging you $350 for sticks. So what Shift Hockey is doing is they went and they found the best manufacturers and all of the best equipment possible, and they're bringing you that top quality stick that all these other places are upcharging you for and giving it to you for less than 200 bucks. Truly, anyone who plays hockey, listen to me loud and clear. If you are a parent with kids in youth hockey, if you are a college player, a high school player, or someone in beer league who knows what it feels like when you snap your twig and you go, I won't be able to pay rent this month because my next stick is going to cost half of a grand, those problems are over because shift hockey has come to save the day like a hero wearing a shimmering cape. It's unbelievable. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to shifthockey.com slash netters, and then you're going to pump in that promo code netters, and you're going to save 10% on top of the fact that these sticks are the same quality for half the price. I will tell you right now, I have a shift hockey stick. I used it for the first time last week in my men's league game. And I scored, and that's obvious. These things are amazing. They treat you just the same as all those top quality sticks that the pros are using. And again, you don't have to pay an arm and a leg. Shift Hockey is the move. So that's, again, shifthockey.com slash netters. Put in that promo code, save 10%, and stop breaking the bank every single time you buy a new stick. Go do it. All right. Now, before we get into this episode, this is unbelievable. We've got uh, Chris Nelson joining the podcast, a.k.a. Nelly. Unbelievable guy. National champion from Wisconsin, got drafted by the Devils, and then has done everything you could ever imagine in the world of hockey. He's won it all. He is now immersing himself in the entertainment world. We're going to let you guys just get right into this interview. We're not going to waste your time with all this stuff. Just the quick hitters. You know, we've got three hottest teams of the week. Sure, Jack Eichel has had a brutal skid, hasn't scored in, in a few games. The Buffalo Sabres are fucking killing me, but huge win against Toronto last night. So that's big, but we're not going to bore you with all that stuff because this is an unbelievable interview. It's running long. We want you guys to just enjoy that. So let's not waste any more time. CP's in Colombia right now, so we can't even, it's not like I can kick it to him or anything like that. So let's just go right to the interview. Guys, enjoy it. Have a blast. Okay, Dan, we are honored to welcome to the pod. 1990 national champion with the Wisconsin Badgers, the 96th overall pick of the New Jersey Devils in the 88 draft, two-time Team USA roller hockey world champion, Toyota Sports Center gold league champion, business owner, future Emmy winner, and former Deep Roy Paradox legend. Wow. Chris Nelly Nelson. He went there. Yeah, the we thing, did. It was cool. The problem is you had to know. So that should just be like off the You're top right. of your head. I should have memorized mean, it. Boom, right? I should have memorized, memorized it. You left out first African-American win the national championship. Oh, let's go. You left you know, recently divorced. <laughs> He's out in the single market right now. He's living life to the fullest. There's all those little details yep. that you missed, but we'll get that in conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. so, so that's why you're asking about him. He's taking notes. Yes. <laughs> like, which one do I have to need to be? Uh, oh, well, fortunately, we have a 30-minute segment about divorce, so it's going to be great. Done. Right? Done. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Dude, so one of the funniest things about this is so for the listeners we play in a men's league here in la with nelly i got your number from oh this is funny. our our team manager will burke because you thought it was cute yeah because i wanted you to come on the show okay all right. and then also because i thought you were cute <laughs> he gives me your number yep i text you yep no response happens and i'm like this <laughs> well, so now you should know what it's like so now I, you know how it feels. Yeah, I do, right? So Dan I, never responds to my text, especially when I'm in times of need. Oh, <laughs> such bullshit. So uh, I wait a few weeks. Yep. I'm like, I might be busy. Yep. Text you again, no response. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this fucking guy. So we then play each other like the next week. Yep. And at the center face off, I skate up to you and I was like, respond to my fucking text. And you said some joke, but I could see in your face you were like, what are you talking about? Yep. So then we'll get into this later, but Nelly, star on a new hit Netflix movie, 
I, I shoot him a text like, dude, congrats. That's amazing. He responds fucking immediately. Or actually, wait, no, no, no. I get a response from this person that goes, this is Talia. Who are you trying to text? <laughs> and I thought it was you fucking with me. So I'm like, what the fuck is Nelly doing? And then I get a response back from Talia, this gorgeous black woman in a mirror selfie. And I was like, this could still be now yes. fucking with me. <laughs> but I eventually look at the contact card that Berkey sent me, and there's two numbers. It's one of those, like, here's his work number, here's his cell. So I then take the cell number. You had my work Yeah, one. dude. <laughs> yep. So I then text your cell, and I go, I was like, yo, dude, congrats on the move. He responded in five seconds. And then I was like, by the way, come on the podcast. And he's like, oh, yeah, literally whenever. I've been waiting. And I was like, <laughs> I've been texting Talia, Talia for six months. Just you- unbelievably. So... So we'll get all this stuff. I used to run, and I, I was the, the face of W Hotels for years. Yeah. And I was at this position called the Insider. And they gave me a cell phone, and that was, you know, to use, I had a personal phone and a cell phone, or a, a work cell phone. And I would get that number out and contacts and all these things. And I was at W Hotels, that same number for about nine and a half years. When I left W Hotels, I told them, I go, whoever has this phone is going to deal with so much stuff because my phone would ring every 30 seconds yeah, text that. phone calls everything all the time so when i left i turned the phone in and they literally called me like yeah you got 75 phone calls and 110 text messages in three days i'm like yeah that's what my life was like, like we I didn't realize you. i'm like yeah that's what it's like yeah. that phone got passed down from person to person to person poor talia's like who is this what is going guy? on right now? Why is he texting me about hockey all <laughs> yeah, the time? Yeah, Talia's getting all these well, celebrity the requests. I <laughs> need to go to the W Hollywood and go right up to the front desk and see if there's a beautiful black woman standing there with a cell. I'll be like, Talia? Let's get Talia. Free room? What's up? Let's like, get Talia, Talia on the pod. Yeah, yeah. For real. She brought her in. And here we have Talia. <laughs> Dude. So, so funny. All right. Well, Chris touched on it a little bit in the intro, but I want to get into the early days of your hockey life. Okay. Get, give the people a taste of how you got here. So you grew up in Philly. Then your parents moved born, to New Hampshire. Born in Philly. Okay. Then moved to New Hampshire. So your parents get jobs teaching at Dartmouth. My mom How was. Doing? Yeah. My mom bad. was, I think, dean of admissions at Dartmouth, and my dad was professor there. Unbelievable. Yeah. And they they were. Did they meet in Philly? No. Uh, my they met. My dad went to Penn State. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not Penn State. Sorry, uh, Penn Grad School. Okay. And I think it was four years older than my mom. So my mom graduated from undergrad. My dad graduated from, graduated from grad school. They met at some point in between. Got they it. got together twice, from what I understand. Yeah. One brother and myself. Yeah. <laughs> and, and <they> Confirmed. Got, <laughs> twice. Confirmed and twice. We're not going to think about it any yeah. further than that. It was the two times. Yeah. And uh, and they, uh, you know, they you know, applied for jobs and both got jobs at Dartmouth, which is great. Actually, Scratch that. We moved to Los Angeles really early, early, early in our days. Interesting. Uh, had an earthquake. They go, screw this. This is awful. Moved from uh, LA to New Hampshire. Got it. And so I was in New Hampshire from, I guess, what, Montessori school all the way up to like fifth grade. Yeah. And then the pipes in our house burst. And my parents were like, screw this. We're going back, going back to, to LA. Done yeah. with winter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. But you get the itch there in New Hampshire, right? You start playing hockey like three years old. Yes. Yep. So that you, then you start playing. Parents get jobs at UCLA, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Go back to LA. Yep. But now you're like, well, I love hockey. I'm going to keep playing. Yep. So you you keep traveling around. You eventually went off to Michigan to play high school for well, a couple of years, well, right? It gets, it gets tricky because I, my parents told me I'll never play hockey because they don't have hockey rings out, yep. out in Los Angeles. And we happened to move about three blocks from Culver City Ice Rink. Oh, dude, I, what a great rink, yeah. dude. Oh, my when God. When we first moved here, we went, wound up in Culver, and I drove 10, 10 yards down the road, see an ice rink, and I was yep. like, oh, my God, I'm in heaven. And yeah. then it closed like two weeks later. <laughs> yeah. I was like, God damn it. Yeah. So that was the rink that I, uh, I mean, I, I worked on the original Youngblood. Yeah. Oh, no shit. Morning. I didn't yeah. know that. Um, wow. And that's where a lot of my youth hockey was. I mean, New Hampshire was, it was, is what it was. Yeah. But that's where I got the bug for it. But I continued to play out here in Los Angeles. Yeah. And I was, I was probably 12 years old playing with 16 year olds. So I was, yeah. I was that advanced. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there was, wasn't a lot of coaching, wasn't a lot of, uh, a lot of skill set back then because most of the kids sure. were all back east tearing it up. Yeah. So I kind of came out here and I wasn't really a hockey player. I was just an athlete. I was just really good. Yeah. And that was able to propel me enough to play against older kids where that kind of went on to Michigan. Sure. We can go from there. I was going to say, yeah. So you go to Michigan, you go to Cranbrook. Yes. Uh-huh. Before we even get into Cranbrook, <laughs> yeah. are we talking like Papa Doc Cranbrook? We That's are, the same Cranbrook? Is that the, is that the private school? Eight Mile was an amazing movie. I remember going to that, watching with my friends and they talk about, hey, you went to Cranbrook. It's a private school. I was like, oh, 
<laughs> oh God! Oh, you're God. fucking dead. I Every am. Time I am tell Papa Doc. Story, yeah, yeah, you're like, yeah, I went to Cranbrook, it's and everyone's like, like, you bitch, <laughs> cake eater. <laughs> no, that's literally what it was like. I put my head down. They go, hey, just go, just go to Cranbrook. I'm like, yes, I went to Cranbrook. I, I get it. I understand. I understand. But yeah, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a tough, tough moment in my life in the film industry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was Cranbrook like though? Was that a good time? Did you like playing hockey there? Did you like the people there? What was the vibe? Like? Cranbrook cool. was absolutely ridiculous. Okay. Uh, when I went there. You know, I've I'd seen Exeter, uh, Governor Dummer, Brooks, Tabor Taft. I've seen the East Coast ones. You know, they're they're beautiful yeah. schools. Not yeah, mentioning yeah. Andover. Yeah, that was so tough. tough. I, I, I went to Exeter. Down. He went to Andover. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so my brother just, went to Andover. Let's just edit that. Yeah, yeah. Andover this. first, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, you know, I I saw the campus and it was literally the most beautiful campus in the world. I mean, it, it's it's obvious. It's it's in the Beverly Hills of Michigan. Okay, it's in Bloomfield Hills, yeah. in Birmingham, mm-hmm. and uh, it's an art school and. It, it it made public school look like first grade. Yeah, right. um, and we Dude. we were reading. Ch- uh, we can relate, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's Chaucer's crazy. Canterbury Tales. Yeah. yeah, no, we're reading that kind of book. You know, yeah. we're, we're deciphering from this version up to that version of it, and it was an incredible exp- experience. The hockey was phenomenal. Um, I it was good to have actually some 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 really good competition because you know in L.A. It was, For like, sure. it was, it was the, the top dog it was myself, yeah. uh, a guy by the name of Eric Lamarck. Uh, Rob Mandel and Steve Bo Davis uh, mm. were the top ones, yeah, all in kind of is. same age bracket. And so when I went to to Cranbrook, you know, I got the better competition, and I really did enjoy it. You know, you're out of the house at 15 years old, you're living on your own, you're trying to figure things out, you're trying to how do I do school, how do I do hockey, how, how do I date? I mean, at 15 years old, you're starting to like girls. It's kind of like yeah. it's weird. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on there, but it was an absolutely amazing experience. And I wouldn't, in the, of all those prep schools I looked at. I would go there again in a heartbeat. Wow, a that's heartbeat. awesome. Yeah. That's huge. So you went ju- uh, sophomore, junior year, right? Sophomore, junior year. And yep. then you bounced to the USHL? Uh, sophomore, junior year, uh, Coach Ted Kelly left. Yep. Um, so uh, he was the end all be all of coaches. Yeah. So he left. Uh, when he left, I left. I uh, came back to LA and I was trying to figure out what to do. And I ended up going to public school again. And, you know, public school is easy breezy, but yeah. it was hard to get some of the classes to transfer over from. Oh, up- yeah. Prep school, yeah, that makes which sense. Which is so accelerated to public school. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking about stuff that they're like, you've already graduated. Yeah, yeah. Like, you've already read, <laughs> you you already read Canterbury else. Tales. And you're I, like, I, yeah, I, yeah, I read it. Yeah, I was literally like two years <laughs> in the college, or, you know, at, at, at Granbrook. Yeah. So I went to public school. The weird part about it is that those credits didn't transfer over. So I literally went my senior year in public school at Palisades from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Oh because I had to get it all dude, done. To what? get it all done because the, the the credits wouldn't transfer over. Yeah. So I would go part to uh half the day would be at Palisades and the other half would be at Uni High. To oh, get the shit. credits going. Yeah, it was crazy. Was it easy for you and it was just a, a ton of work to get done or was it like kind of a grind? Bored, oh. out, of, bored out of our mind. Yeah, I yeah. bet. Absolutely yeah. bored out of our mind. Yeah. It's like, oh, one plus one is two. Yeah, we did yeah. that a long, long time ago. Yeah, and where were you at with, because when you were at Cranbrook, that's when kind of the, uh, you were getting interest from Wisconsin. Yep. W- where was that in the process I when got, you were back at public school? I got my first notice uh, to Wisconsin on my, my sophomore year at Cranbrook. Okay. okay. So it was, it was, I had that year and my junior year, and we won state champions both years. But, I mean, we're not a hockey family. Yeah. So we don't know... We knew of Wisconsin, of course. We knew it's a school. Yeah. You know, my parents were like, yeah, great. A letter would be fantastic for you to go there. My parents never thought in a million years I'd ever do anything with hockey. Yeah. And then so when we left Cranbrook, it's like, well, that was fun. It was good. Now I'm in public school. And I played uh, locally, I think in Marina Cities. And then I played an all-star team. Uh-huh. So my weekends were full. So I did school all day, all night. And then my weekends would be either up in Northern California or down here for tournaments. Damn. And I would just you know, continue to play. And then, uh, and your parents were you, no doubt like pushing you into education. I bet. Like, oh, they're all they didn't know a thing about hockey. Yeah, yeah. absolutely no, nothing at all. So I have a great story with that one. <laughs> so a guy by the name of Frank Saratori contacted me. He's like, "Hey, you know, I've watched you play. You're a good hockey player. I understand you're in California. You'd be amazing to come out and maybe play hockey in the USHL on my team." I go, "Great, that's yeah, sure, more hockey, fantastic." Mom, Dad, what do you think? That'd be great. Go ahead, do your thing. Frank Saratori left. Oh no! And then Kevin Constantine is now the coach there, so I get there. This brand new coach I've never met before, and I'm like, "Well, here I am. Here's yeah, what I'm doing. Up. I'm here. Let's yeah. go play some hockey." And I finished that year with uh, Defenseman of the Year, yep, for the USHL, and we won the whole title yep. there as well. Now so you're coming off two straight state championships. 
not and then into the into the championship shabby, yeah, yeah. in the USHL. But this is how naive our family was. Yeah. So I scored a hat trick uh, during the NHL All Star break. So NHL All Star break, every scout yeah, in the world yeah. is is watching all the junior programs. Of course. So I score a hat trick playing defense, and you know we go down and you know the coach says, "Hey guys, great game. We won the whole thing. Fantastic." And he goes, hey, Chris, there's a couple people that want to meet you. He goes, I go, ask, who wants to meet me? He goes, I don't know, but there's a lot of them. And I went out, and there was like a string of scouts and coaches in the hallway. It was Bowling Green. It was Michigan. It was Wisconsin. I think Michigan Tech. um, Merrimack might have been. There's a whole bunch of schools. And your parents are at the game? No, my parents are back in L.A. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Great. Oh, it, it, Calling you later oh, on the hotel phone. They're like, how'd it go? <laughs> oh, you, you guys will lose your mind when you hear this thing. So, so you know, I met them all and talked to them. I'm like, hey, we let, Wisconsin was like, we'd love you to come to our school. It'd be great. You know, do a tour. I'm like, yeah, it'd be fantastic. Cut to, I go to tour of Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, I guess when I landed there, it's kind of foggy, but I landed there, told me I got drafted. I said, congratulations, you were drafted. And I was like, Dude, get the fuck what? out of here, dude. You have no idea. I was like, we have a war right now? I did not know what oh, shit. Well, my, gonna, my agent's kill my shaking mom. his head right now. Oh my oh, what's, god. What's the fastest way to get to Canada right now? What the fuck is happening? I had absolutely no clue what being drafted was. No way, no, no, dude. Because we're not a so, hockey family. So yeah. you weren't really an NHL fan. Like you're playing the game, you love the game, but you weren't really dialed into the Kings or anything like that. Boston Bruins, because yeah. I was in New Hampshire. Sure. That's the first jersey I wore as a kid. Yeah. That was it. And then oh the Flyers God. was a board of Philly. I didn't know a thing about the sport. Yeah. Nothing at all. I was just an athlete that happened to be able to get from point A to point B really fast. Yeah. And I mean, to get drafted in the NHL and not even know what the draft is. High, too. So Dude, top 100 that is picks. insane. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. It, was, it was nuts. Yeah. And so, you know, you go there. And then when I went to go visit Wisconsin, you know, uh, Rob Mandel, who I played with when I was younger out here in LA, mm-hmm. he met me. Because he, would, he was, uh, I think, a year or two ahead of me and so he's like no hey congratulations you know you're here let's walk you around and you know you do your tour and i'm looking around and go this is an amazing campus so i wanted to go to a big school that had a huge student population that had a great academics and had a great hockey you know tradition no wisconsin yeah. easy that easy good. money like that in michigan yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. let's yeah. fill those buckets but i wanted to go to a school where everyone stayed on campus michigan have a lot of day people yeah, that kind of come for and sure Definitely. and with madison people they, if you saw a hot girl at 2.15 on a Tuesday, she's going to be there on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because everyone and has been posted up for two straight days. It, waiting. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's cold and outside. <laughs> come on, Thursday. Come on, Thursday. And, and, she, and it was, that's what it was like. It was everybody, you know, they went to school there. They partied there. They supported their, their sports there. And I go, this is it. Yeah. But what really sold me is that when they brought me into the Dayton County Coliseum and there's... What eight thousand six hundred forty four fans, and I walked in, and I think it was North Dakota, and Wisconsin just scored, and the whole crowd's going sieve, yeah, yeah. sieve, sieve. I'm going, I'm a black kid from Los Angeles. These fans will eat me alive if I play against the school. Yeah, where do I sign? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Can't, was it. Cannot ever play against. Yes, Wisconsin. A- absolutely. Yeah. That was that was it. It was like. I got to go because there was a lot of stuff I went through that I'm sure we'll get to in a moment. Yeah. There's a lot of ups and downs and stuff. But once, you know, Rob Mandel was there. I saw the school. I saw uh, the academics we all knew were fantastic. The hockey program was great. And that fan support, I go, this is where I have to go. Sure. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So you go there. You win multiple national championships Uh, or just sophomore year? We won one my sophomore year. Our team was so good. Yeah. Like when I say good... Our our goaltender was Curtis Joseph. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys were stacked. Yeah, he was our goaltender. <laughs> and uh, and I remember, and, like, that's talking about again for the listeners, one of the greatest NHL goalies of all time playing in college for you guys. Like, it makes such a difference. Yeah, it's ridiculous. He was so good that you know we're out there practicing, and I go, "This guy's pretty good." And someone told me, "Yeah, he won't be here much longer." Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? I go, "He's going to be in the NHL." Yeah. Interesting. I didn't know that's how it happened. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, you, you play hockey? And then and I was like, I got drafted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And literally, it's like we 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 lost in like the quarterfinals, whatever it is. This is freshman year? This is my freshman yeah. year. And I was like, oh, okay. And then he left. Yeah. And then Dwayne Dirksen was the backup. <laughs> yeah. We won. And Dwayne was a great goaltender. Yeah. He won an NCAA title with 
essentially our backup goaltender. Yeah, definitely. Who you know played a little bit his freshman year, but he started his sophomore year. Yeah, we won a national championship there, and then my senior year we lost in the finals. So I mean, that's right. Talk about a career at Wisconsin. Hell like, yeah, we were so good. I mean, I didn't even know what spring break was. Yeah, we right. never had that we opportunity. Yeah. opportunity. You're we're just always grinding. playing. Yeah. So, uh, what what was that like? Like you said, you go in, you do your visits, mm-hmm. you see the campus, you see the student body, you see those fans. Yep. You're like, I have to play here. And the academics, and the, and the academics, the academics yeah. important. Yeah. But then your second year there, you win a natty. Yep. Uh, what are you feeling in that moment? You're like, holy shit! How and, is this and what were the to scenes me? like? Honestly, it, it. I never. It's gonna sound weird. I never knew what it was like to lose. We was yeah. every team, my yeah. my high school team, state championships back to back. Yeah. Played juniors, you know, won the title of USHL. Yeah. Go to Wisconsin with the NCAAs. We did really well, but you know, we didn't win it. Yeah. Okay, we did well. Oh, we won the sophomore year. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. I mean it was just like just something that just kind of happened. Usual for you. It's like walking. I'm like, okay, we're left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. And we just kind of felt that, that was gonna that was what it was gonna be like. Yeah. Junior year, we had a great junior year. Senior year we lost the finals. So it's just it's just commonplace. It's what we yep. do. Losing for now at this point is just like little hiccups. Yeah, little hiccups yeah. Here and no, there. I went like, yeah, like we lost in the finals. Yeah. We're like whatever. But, that doesn't happen normally. But I will tell you, we I had a class is four hundred and seventy five women. It was women's studies class. Yep. And we just won the title. And <laughs> I have a tendency to be late every so often. I couldn't blame it on parking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, it tends to be late, and there was about four hundred twenty-five women. I think about twelve men in this class. Yeah, and my ma- my major was African American studies uh, with a uh, minor in uh, communications, communication, yeah, communication arts and women's studies. Okay, so it was to fulfill yeah. my yeah. graduation requirements. Yeah, yeah. yeah. goddamn. And you know, we had this big class with these big oak doors, and I'm probably five minutes late, and I'm like, oh god, you know, just got done with the national championship here. All right, let's do this. Door opens up. It's just a big creak, and it always, it always one, is when you're late. You yeah, know? it's one of those where the professor's right there, and you have to walk past the professor, go up the steps to your seat. Mm-hmm. And I walk in, the professor's like, "Oh, hi, everybody." Just in case you didn't know, this is Christopher Nelson, and I'm like, "Oh God, here it goes." <laughs> he just won a national championship for That's Division good. One men's hockey. Standing ovation. Let's go. Get out. Let's go. Standing ovation. Damn. Now. Mind you, I was a virgin when I went to Wisconsin. <laughs> sure. It got really good <laughs> after we're an national championship. Flashing that ring around and <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, yeah. things are about to yeah. change a little bit for the kid. And, here. and here's the thing. It's like basketball was awful. Yeah. Football was awful. Track was okay. And hockey, we were just studs. A wagon. Yeah, we a wagon. Yeah, and 100%. so here I am, this Black kid from Los Angeles playing hockey, winning national championships at Wisconsin. Yeah, I was gonna say in Wisconsin. Yeah, it's like you, it, you are literally a unicorn. Yeah, <laughs> you're a unicorn it, on this game. I I didn't realize it until after I left, but oh my god. Yeah, it was the best four years of my life. What was because Madison, right? At especially at that time. Yeah, I feel like they live and breathe Badgers and Packers. Oh, like that's it. Yeah. So a little bit of Bucks, a little bit of Brewers, but it is yeah. it is Badgers and Packers. So and you're wh- taking a college Badgers with an NFL team. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's how not, that's big something it was. Was. Great yeah. point. Crazy. Great point. Yeah. What was in in your the annals of your memory hmm? craziest scene after you won the Natty? Like what was the most bizarre and wild moment on campus partying of being like, holy shit, this we is fucking nuts. did it. People like, are going bonkers right now. Like honestly, it was that moment I walked into that classroom. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because I mean it's women's studies. Yeah. Yeah, it's like four hundred women in a women's studies class. And they aren't probably aren't really big hockey fans. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, it's, I'm just thought they're safe to say. Safe to say. I'm sure some of them have been to some games. Yeah. But it wasn't like I was going to, uh, you know sports marketing. Sports class. marketing yeah, 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 or communications, whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. This was women's studies. And I got so a stand ovation in that class, and it was I'll I'll never ever forget that moment ever. Because yeah, no way. Because I I I try to blend in. I thought I blended in. Yeah, yeah. Not but anymore. It, dude, the, the campus was three percent black. Yeah. And either you were from Africa. Yeah. Or you were an athlete. That yeah. was it. Yeah. And it wasn't football, and it wasn't basketball, and people knew pretty fast that oh, that's the guy that's the from Los Angeles yep. hockey. Yeah. But I wasn't like all badgered, you know, <laughs> yeah. Letterman's jacket yeah. you know, with my sticks over yeah. my shoulder. I wasn't like thrown over the shoulder. Yeah, I just kind of, you know, kind of went in. I, I, I was an athlete that played hockey. Yeah, hockey. It wasn't live or die by the sport. Sure. Um, I 
just happened to, you know, play a sport and it just did really well for myself, my career, my life. It's so awesome. Well, so like you touched on earlier, and the last thing I, I, I need to know about, you know, the Wisconsin era, mm -hmm. when you won, mm -hmm. did you know that you were the first black athlete to win a hockey national championship? No. And, and when did you find out and what did it mean to you? Was that moment that was like kind of so crazy that you just kind of were like, oh shit, or was it, did you feel the sort of immense nature of what that meant? Didn't really know. I didn't even know it was defenseman of the year in the USHL until oh, a couple wow. years ago. Yeah. Didn't know he got drafted, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the NHL was. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I got a job. Everyone's like applying for jobs. I'm like, oh, I'm going to New Jersey. Oh, okay. I guess yeah. I'll do that. Yeah, Sounds sure. good. <laughs> um, uh, Mike Greer. From BU. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, something came across the pages, and I was looking at his Wikipedia or something like that, and it came up that Mike Greer was the first uh, African American to ever like, captain a what an, an NHL team, something like that, yeah. or what, some, something weird like that. And I was like, huh. I started doing my back research, and I was like, wait a second. I think I, and I was. Yeah. I, I don't want to say I was a jockey, Jackie Robinson of college hockey. <laughs> Because Jackie Robinson went through a lot worse stuff than I did. Yeah, but we're, listen, we're not going to say that you're not. Yeah. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to sit here and say that you're not yeah. Jackie Robinson of college hockey. Uh, you don't have to say sure. it. Our, well, our words, yeah. our words, not yours. Yeah, yeah your your words, not mine. I just stumbled on this fact. Yeah, and I was like, that's kind of cool. That's pretty yeah. sick. Yeah, dude. I mean, come on, it's that's unbelievable. It's amazing job interviews. Let me yeah. Tell you. Oh Ooh. yeah. <laughs> and I mean, how how electric is it now? Looking at college hockey and seeing how many African American athletes are in there oh. getting drafted to the NHL. Yeah. It's on like you know got guys like Q on the Kings, and yeah. it's like this is sick. Yeah. Seeing how much it's growing. Yeah, it's well the the sport is a lot more accessible than what it used to be. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, once again, moving to Los Angeles, I would never played hockey. It wasn't a chance in hell, but I happened to move literally just around the corner from Corpus City Ice Rink, and then yeah. I continue to play. I mean, if we move to like let's say Long Beach, something like that. Yeah, not, no chance. Not a chance. Yeah. No yeah, way. You're right. No way. Absolutely right. It's and not. so I just it happened. I just stayed with it and continued to to work with it, and, and it took off. Hell yeah! Well, because you're addicted to winning everything, I want to transition to some of the roller hockey stuff, and we're <laughs> going to talk about the tournament specifically in a second. But first, can you just touch on what it was? Because I've heard you say before how stacked that Devils blue line was when you got drafted. Oh. So you're like, I'm never even going to crack this roster anyway. So can you just mm -hmm. talk about? those few years of like playing bouncing around ahl the w all that stuff and then kind of moving back here and getting into roller well the, the thing with me is what i said before i played hockey yeah yeah i wasn't a hockey player i mean i never really practiced much at it i was just just as a natural athlete I was a gifted athlete my yeah. dad ran track my mom ran track and i was just really good and could figure things out really fast but when i went to new jersey and i'm looking at like scott niedermeyer uh <laughs> Fatisov, who played in the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, not U.S., I'm sorry, Russian Olympic hockey team. Uh, Bruce uh, Driver, Ken Danico. Um, Steven. Steven. Scott yeah. Steven, <laughs> for Christ's right, sakes. I mean, they were so stacked. That must have been weird getting drafted. Like, mm -hmm. once you once you realized it, right? You're like, I got drafted by the yeah. Devils. And then you look at their roster and see a bunch of future like Hall of Fame fuck? defensemen yeah. on that roster. You must have been like, Jesus Christ. And I'm not a hockey fan. Yeah, yeah. And I know these guys. Yeah. Like, that's Fantastic a point. Lot. And yeah. Lou Lamarillo pulls me in the office. He goes, so, Chris, how do you feel? I'm like, I feel good. He goes, so what do you think? I go, think about what exactly? He goes, well, we look pretty steep at D. I go, yeah. I, I <laughs> yeah, we sure that. do. I saw that. And he's like, okay, so what do you think? I go, I don't know. I mean, you tell me. You're the boss. He goes, what do you think about playing wing? Never done before. Let's go for it. Okay, great. We're going to, we got, uh, we're going to scrimmage coming up. Um, we're going to put you at wing. Why don't you try it out? I'm like, sure. First shift, oh, first God. touch the puck, shelf on Broder. <laughs> get the what? fuck out. I thought you were going to say you got flattened by Stevens, but <laughs> no, yeah, you yeah, bottle like, service I'm Marty. Waiting for Came an down on the left run. side, shot it, bink in on Broder. Yeah. And Marty afterwards, he goes, dude, I had no clue who you were. I go, I don't even know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no clue. Uh, yeah, this is the first time I've ever played this yeah. position. That is yet, epic. So. Yeah. And Lou Lamorello pulls me back in the office the next day. He's like, okay, now we got a problem. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, right. He's like, I really don't know what to do with you. I'm yeah. like, I don't know what to do with me. I have no clue. Yeah, He's yeah. like, well, we're going to send you Utica. Um, so go there, do your thing, and work your butt off and see if you can make your way back up. Okay. Yeah. And so I was in Utica for a couple of games, and Robbie Fatork was the coach there. Yeah. Robbie Fatork, who was the coach of the Kings, who famously said, either Gretzky goes or I go. That's the person I have, Robbie Fatork. Yep. And I mean, great coach, great man. He didn't really vibe with me, <laughs> per se, and he sent me to Cincinnati. So I go to Cincinnati in the IHL, and the IHL doesn't exist anymore, but the IHL was the league where all the NHL players that were kind of going out the pasture. Yeah, yeah. Play. 
we flew to Vegas, San Diego, yeah. Milwaukee. It was, li- it was luxury down there. And I was in Cincinnati. So it's pretty good climate down there. Golfing every day. It was fantastic. I was playing really well, really happy. And then I get a phone call. Hey, we're sending you back to Utica. And you're like, oh, are you <laughs> sure? Oh, God. <laughs> and this is what put the nail in the coffin. I get back to Utica. I see Robert Fatorek and Robbie goes, Nelly, well, you're back. What do you think? I said, I really liked golfing in Cincinnati. That was it. Yeah, I was toast. Done. <laughs> Done. Yeah. I, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah right. I, 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 I didn't know how to play the game. I didn't know yeah. how these things work. I thought we were, we were just chatting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, that was it. My roommate was Jaroslav Modry. Oh, no way. Who didn't speak a word of English. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who... No, we became very, very close friends after you learned English. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, 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 <laughs> it probably helped a little bit. He was the Kings and he was the All Star game. Yeah, 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 Mo. He, he, he pulled me aside. He goes, Nelly, I've never seen a black person before in my life. That is Until I met wild. you and you're my roommate. He goes, I saw the bottom of your feet <laughs> and I had no clue. <laughs> yeah. I go, I never thought about that. But yeah, he'd yeah. never seen an African American at all. Yeah, in life, that's ever. so crazy. So it's crazy. That is too funny, yeah. dude. So, um, yeah, so you you come you come back come yep. back to LA. Well, hold on, hold on. I I am curious. Do you ever look back at that moment talking with Robbie mm-hmm. and regret saying that, or where you're like, well, no, this is where I I feel like you've said before you were always destined for more than the NHL. Mm-hmm. The NHL was never the plan, yeah. right? So like, do you ever look back at that like, shit, I wish I didn't say that. See what would have shook out, or you're like, no, you it's know, it's good where we end. I had a talk with my brother today on yeah. the way down here. We were talking about like, you know, if I had dra- been drafted by a different team, I'd have played, you know. Two, three, five, ten years in the NHL. Yeah. My life is so good right now. And I'm so happy that anything that I might have done with the NHL, I'm like, I got that mindset of like, I'm a pro hockey, pro hockey player. And then all of a sudden, I find myself at 35, 36, 38 years old, not knowing what to do with my life that a lot of NHL players yeah. go through. Yeah. They make a ton of money, but then they're like, okay, they played hockey their entire life. Their entire life was all hockey and they don't know what to do. And do you go into broadcasting? Do you start to hang out with your wife for the first time after 10 years of marriage? <laughs> yep, for real. Get to know your kids' first names? I mean, how's that work? So I don't regret any decision I ever made with that. And, you know, I had that talk with, uh, with Mark Hardy, which mm. is another, yeah. you know, you can bring that up and we'll tell you stories yeah. about that one yeah, as well. Yeah, for sure. But that was like the entry into like my, my film career with, yeah, with Mark yeah. Hardy. There you so. go. Incredible. Okay, so Roller, you jump into Roller yep. and- you guys win the national the world championship in ninety seven and oh four. Yeah, we won a bunch of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and it was kind of old. I think maybe one was here in Anaheim, but one yeah. was in Germany, right? Yeah, we won one in uh, in Anaheim. Uh, I think it won two or three. I think. Yeah, I mean, just we, yeah, you, again, you've got multiple yeah. world championships. So in yeah. hockey. tell me so about electric. that because we, you know, we're from Maine, right? Like it was mm-hmm. always cool. We're playing hockey. I never really got. I never really played roller. So mm-hmm. how did that transition even happen for you? What is it like? How is it different? Uh, Brett Kurtz, uh, who was a teammate of mine at Wisconsin, uh, I was, I think I was at Mass and still training to get, to get ready to go to New Jersey's camp. And he sent me these chassis. He's like, dude, this summer, you got to come out. There's this thing called roller hockey. And it was just chassis. It was a little metal thing with no wheels. <laughs> like, strap what is it? Yeah. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? He's well, you have to get them mounted. I'm like, I don't what do you mean, mounted? Yeah, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> so I go to our trainer, I go, uh, Rob, can you mount these? Mount on my these, skates? please. <laughs> yeah. And he, he yeah. put them on and then I got wheels. And I'm like, oh, this is a great training. Yeah. So I started training with them at Madison. Um, and I think I went to camp, uh, New Jersey, did the whole season there. When I came back to LA, uh, after my second year pro, I think, I kind of got involved in roller hockey and just took natural tubes. I was always a great skater. Yeah. yeah. And guys my size that could skate in full speed, I would just crush I'm gonna people. You're going to say you're a weapon. <laughs> yeah. That's because once I have you in my sights, like hockey, you can kind of cut and get out of the way. Mm. Once I have you in my sights and roller, I'm going through you. Yeah. And you cannot get out of the way because I was fast and I was strong and I'm you know, 6'2", 225 pounds, but I skate like I weigh 150 pounds. Yep. So I just blow through guys. And, and are you full hitting and roller? Full contact. Oh, damn. Full dude. contact. <laughs> what kind of pads are you wearing? Is it like uh, full hockey pads? Or you, is wear it like, you wear like a, like a football girdle. Okay. Um, shin pads, elbow pads, helmet, gloves. Uh, some guys wear shields. I didn't wear a shield back then. But it's a lighter version of hockey equipment. Yeah, sure. Um, but I mean, you could if you could skate, you could you could motor out there. Yeah, and it was I mean just crushing people. That's wild. Yeah. So so you loved it. It was a blast. It was awesome. 
It was yeah, awful. that's incredible. And it's a paid job. Like, I get paid to play it. Roller hockey? This is yeah. awesome. And winning more titles. And our, our owner was this this person, um, I think her name was Jeannie Bus. Yo, I have heard of her. Heard of her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, she's done yeah. some cool yeah. stuff. Yeah, she's done some cool stuff. So she was the owner of our team and she just I mean, she loved the guys, she loved the sport, she's a a great, you know, uh ambassador for the sport. Yeah. And I mean, she took care of us. Yeah. We heard horror stories of teams like in Atlanta, they were you know, first getting the twenty five people in the stands. We're selling out the pond. Sick. So bullfrogs and the blades would sell out the pond. I mean, yeah. it was incredible. So it was it was you know another experience. But I didn't really know what it was like to not have a good experience. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Uh, th- th- when you think about everything that Sh- Genie Bus has going yeah. on to to care about you guys oh. and and to to show up and, and give that much attention is actually pretty phenomenal. Yeah, cool. I mean that's unbelievable. Oh, it, I mean she she was great. The whole family was f- fantastic. Like when the season was over and there was you no know, Laker games, Doctor Jerry Bus would pick me up at my house in a stretch Rolls Royce and take me to Laker games. <laughs> oh, my God. God. And, it, and once again, didn't realize how that was just commonplace. Yeah, like yeah. Go, well, here I'm playing roller hockey. Got Genie Bus as my owner, Dr. Jerry Bus. Hey, what's up, Dr. Bus? Hey, Chris, how are you? Good. You want to go to a game today? Yeah, sure. I'll yeah. pick you up around 6.30. Sure. In the rolls? In the rolls? Yeah, yeah, in the rolls. Yeah, great. He'd pick me up in his brown stretch Rolls Royce yeah. and take me to the games. And I'd sit with Dr. Jerry Bus And... He at the forum he had the worst seats <laughs> in the entire stadium. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you own this place. Yeah, like, What's what are the you deal? doing? He goes, see all those people down there, all those people down there. Those are all purchased seats. Yeah. If I had seats down there, all my friends would be down there with me on those seats, and I'd be losing so much money. Yeah. So if you want to come to a game, you want to come and sit for free. Come on, I got you. And we were at the very top of the rafters behind the backboard. Yeah. <laughs> Back against the cement. Yeah, just, yeah. I was like, "This is cool." But man, since, people. Yeah. But since Jimmy Bus owned the LA Blades, and she was the heir apparent for the Lakers, yeah, yeah. she had a lot of control. Do you know about the Forum Club? No. Is that maybe? Is that the bar? The Forum yeah, Club was yeah. the bar there. Yep. That was the place to be at. That was that was. If you come to LA. You have to see the Laker game. You have to the Forum Club, yeah. and it was impossible to get in that place. That was the hottest club in probably in the world. Genie Bus put a, oh, a God, I didn't know the measurements. Probably twenty five inch by thirty five inch picture of me right next to the Forum Club. Let's go. Of me playing oh, roller hockey. Yeah, I was gonna say, is it yeah. was it because there was a lot of options? It could have been Champions. Wisconsin, but it's yeah. the Blades, yeah. the L.A. Blades right. photo. Yeah. That is fucking because awesome. you go you go to crypto. You yeah. see, you know, LeBron's over there. Yeah. Yeah. It's all these pictures, and like you see, you know, Kobe. You know, he's down there somewhere. I'm literally on the entrance yeah. of, of the, the hottest club, Forum Club. Yeah. yeah. Once again, just thought it was commonplace. Didn't know. Yeah. Okay, here I am. Yeah, sir. Uh, you're on the list. I'm like. Uh, yeah, I'm right. There's my yeah, ticket yeah. right there. <laughs> they go, Bang. Oh, yeah, you're all good to go. Oh, my God. Cut to, oh, I missed something. My first job in LA was concert security. Oh, wow. At I, the forum? At the forum. When I was like, what? <laughs> before when I was like 15, 16 years old. So here was this kid who had an event staff what? jacket yeah, yeah. making five bucks an hour, now has a picture of the him for- outside the forum club. Yeah, at that point, you're like, I own this place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been here since the beginning of time. And the funniest thing, the Funniest thing I love this part is that my boss, when I was a little kid, still worked there as the event staff. <laughs> did, as, he, did he recognize? Like, was he like, "Holy shit!" No, yeah, I introduced up. myself. To him, I'm like, "Hey, remember me?" He's like, "Ah, we see these 500 guys a day." Yeah, yeah. Like, of course. I'm Chris. Chris Nelson's. Oh yeah, you were the little skinny kid. Yeah, well, I grew up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. huge now. What's everything going yeah. for you? I'm like, that's me. Yeah, uh, it's going pretty well. <laughs> I don't know if you ever want to get into the forum <laughs> club. Got, buddy. Got, yeah. got a natty. Got a couple of world championships under my belt. Unbelievable. Yeah. Good God. Uh, so you, is there more on roller? Well, I was just gonna say, I think I saw you got some Mars blades. Is that true? Oh yeah. Yes. We we yeah. just got them. Do you like them? Uh, I like them a lot. Okay. So uh, Ken Yaffe uh, is involved with Mars Blade a little bit. Okay. And with my company, Lockman 13, that if we want to go in there, we can go Yeah, we will. Company. But Definitely. with Lockman 13, I was looking at Chelsea Piers. Oh, um, right, yeah. Because, you know, with New York, it's for sure. they, the need box it, dude. Yeah. They, they need it bad. So I flew out there, I met with Ken Yaffe, and when I flew out uh, to meet him, I just got a script because I just signed the deal yeah. with Mighty Ducks. And I'm looking at it, it goes, opening scene, the ducks skate through the hallways on rollerblades. Bing! Yep. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to meet with Ken, because Ken and I worked with NHL years ago, and I said, Ken, I might have something for you. He's like, what do you got? I go, I'm doing a Mighty Ducks TV show, and there's roller skating. And he's like, really? I go, 
can you make some Mars blades? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll make it happen. Mars blades. And boom, right away happened. Done. Dude, Absolutely happened. Yeah. We, we, we were like, we had a couple ideas. We hit them up as well. And we were yeah. like, hey, we, and they were like, say no more. Yeah. Here's some Mars yeah. blades. And yeah. we were like, that's They were great. Cool. I mean, I got a pair, obviously. Yeah. Uh, director got a pair, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And, all the, and all the Ducks kids got them. And, yeah. you know, I had to go and teach them. It was, the Ducks kids, they were okay scares. We had season one. Sure. Uh, so season two, they were okay, but I had to go out there and work with them, train them how to skate and all that kind of yeah. stuff. And here we are with these Mars blades, and they loved them. They it, loved them. I loved them. They're great. It's I wild like how much them. it does feel like skating. Yeah. Like, so I've, I've been on so many rollerblades, I'm like, these things suck. Yeah. And those, I'm like, I feel like I'm on skates. It's oh, totally and I've had them all. I've had like you know, the plastic you know, ski boot yep, type, yep, mm-hmm. all the way up to like, you know, you name it, up to Mars blades with the top of the food chain. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I roll to work sometimes. Oh. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, so with, you- With parking here, I don't doubt it. Yeah, right? That's <laughs> what I'm saying. So you, you got all these gold medals. You kind of hang up the hockey situation and now you get into hotels so you worked at morgan hotels you worked at starwood and then like you said you worked at the w hollywood shout out talia yeah shout out talia my girl that's my woman (laughs) yeah so i want to know how the hell did you get into that and then give us all the ghost stories you got something Uh, good dude i i i bought a and i bought a I, i rented a place in westwood yeah and you know i knew ucla because my parents worked there and well my new apartment great apartment uh you know, one bedroom, two parking spots in Westwood for seven hundred bucks a month. Oh God! Yeah, I know. Now it's just in a dorm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's. I mean, that's. Re- I should have gone for two grand a month. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Whatever she liked me. So, uh, um, I go walk in the neighborhood and I see this club. And this club is bumping. I'm like, this is awesome. How, how old are you? God, twenty six. Okay, think? yeah. Well, it's I I, I got to do the math, but it was nineteen ninety nine two thousand. Okay, somewhere around there. Got it. And you know, I was like, okay, what am I going to do with my life? And you get a job somewhere. And I walked to this place, and I paid the guy Kevin <laughs> twenty bucks <laughs> yeah. because Kevin and I became great friends. Yeah, pay him twenty bucks to get in, and I walked in. And I looked around. I go, this place is awesome. It was rocking. It was W Hotel. The lights, the music, the people. I go to the bar. I go, are you guys hiring? And they're like, uh, what do you want to do? I go, I don't know how to do anything. I, yeah. I, I want to work here. Like, well, let me see if I can call somebody. Calls this guy, and this guy's like a linebacker coming at me. I mean, he's all <laughs> pumped up and everything coming down. He goes, what well, seems to be the problem? I go, oh, I'm sorry. My name's Chris. Uh, we're going to get a job here. He's like, a job? What do you want to do? I go, I don't know how to do anything. He goes, what have you done? I go, I played a little bit of hockey. You know, I've done some stuff. I did some well, stunts. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like. Show him the ring. Yeah. yeah. He's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll find something for you. What's your information? Gave my information, did the whole thing, background check. It goes, okay, you got a job. I drive to the W Hotel in a bright red Range Rover, okay? <laughs> and I pull oh, up. God, I, I pull up the valet, and the guy's like, oh, check it in. How I long go, are you staying, sir? No, no, yeah. I'm working. You're what? I'm working. He's like, what do you mean working? Well, I have a job here. He's like, well, you can't park here. I go, what do you mean I can't park here? I go, what's it cost? He goes, Cost twenty bucks. I go. Oh, I got that. Yeah, I got a twenty. <laughs> Ask Kevin. I gave it to him last night. Twenty bucks every ten minutes. Yeah. But yeah, and he was like, okay, uh, "Yeah, sure." And I you know valued my car. I was making ten dollars and ten cents an hour <laughs> as a security guard. Yeah, in a ninety-five dollar suit. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So I went yep. from pro hockey yeah. to wearing a ten dollar, uh, working ten dollars and ten cents an hour, wearing yeah. a suit less than hundred bucks. Yeah, but. It was pride swallowing, but I knew I knew I needed to get a job doing something. Sure, because I I can't live off of like I used to do this, I used to do yeah. that. You guys should know who I am. Like it doesn't work that way in LA. So I got a job, and you know through uh, CAA Creative Artists Agency. Sure, you know, yeah. we all know about that. You know that shout out CAA. Yeah, you who <laughs> <laughs> part of the family. <laughs> yeah. About, um, that uh, I knew a, a guy Pratt Persson. Yeah, and he had this skate, this Monday night skate, which. And also, Jerry Bruckheimer had a Bad Boys skate. It was Sunday. So oh, yeah. Sunday was Bad Boys with Jerry and uh, Pat Brisson had a CA skate. So it was basically the same guys. Kiefer Sutherland, Tom Cruise, Cuba Gooding Jr., Michael Rotenberg, Michael Rosenbaum. Um, I've done that Bruckheimer. skate. I was yeah. probably on the ice with you. Yeah, but this is back in the yeah. Oh, yeah, not yeah. That, early not days. That, not that, no. Early, early days. When everyone's a celebrity. I mean, I mean everyone's... A record producer, yeah. an artist, an actor, a director, of everything, and me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, and a security guy. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> and so I would you know do these uh, these skates. And I got to know all the guys really well. They would come visit me at the hotel. 
I bet. I mean, you're probably way better than everyone on the ice there. Too. Yeah, well, I was. And that's something they're like, who is this guy? Yeah. I gotta know him. I mean, they they liked me because I was like, no, I guess I was a nice guy, but I was a great hockey player. Yeah, and I liked them because like, dude, the stories these guys told it was like incredible. Yeah, and and these 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 are the these are the big boys. Yeah. I'm with right now. And you know, Q would come in and visit me, and Kiefer would come in and visit me, and these guys and hang out. Barry Joseph would come in and visit me, and I'll hang out. And then we would go and have dinner afterwards. So my shift would end, you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Then we'd all go and have dinner. I'll walk into Katsuya, me, Jerry, <laughs> Brockheimer, Kiefer, <laughs> Cuba. And we walk in, and, and since I was like the hospitality guy, yeah. I got out of the car first. I go in and say, hey guys, um, do you have anything available? Oh, we're kind of fully committed. I go, well, I've got this guy, this guy, yeah. this guy, this guy. Where are they? Oh, they're outside in the car. Yeah, we'll make it happen for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give yeah, us a of second. Course. And all of a sudden, you know, all the guys get out of the car, and we table's there, and we all go in, we sit down and eat. You don't walk up to Jerry Brookheimer. You don't no. walk up to Kiefer. You don't walk up to Cuba. No, no. You don't walk up to Barry Joe. You don't walk up to Rotenberg, Rosenbaum. You walk up to me because I'm the most approachable guy. Yep. And it, all the owners, Mater D's, Bartenders were like, hey, anytime you want to come by, anything, just let us know. Every restaurant, every club was like that for me. Yeah. So here I'm making 10 bucks an hour at W Hotels, and people quickly realized that Chris was the connect. Yeah, the guy. Yeah. To anything in LA. So anywhere anyone wanted to go, you name it, Sky Bar, I mean, all of them. Yeah. All the, all the big clubs. I make a phone call. I you know, guess what? Hey, you want to go with us? Sure. I go in there and I just expose a whole different life. Yeah. I was at W for, I think, about two years. Got the um, Miracle gig. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Came back uh, after shooting Miracle with W for a couple more months and then uh, went to Skybar. It's my favorite bar. It was, you know, knew everybody there. Hell yeah. And they go, what are you doing? I go, I I just finished Miracle. It's kind of hanging out. They go, you want to work here? Why not? Sure. (laughs) Oh, dude. My God. Imagine. Say, here we go. (laughs) Oh, like, Skybar was it and i travel the world a lot my business card from skybar got me anywhere in the world wow because everybody in the world knew what skybar was yeah and i had ran the door for a little bit and then i ran the interior bottle service let me tell you the first three years at skybar i bought my porsche and a house yeah that's how lucrative that place was i bet no one was doing bottle service no one really had that hospitality background because skybar was like yeah, yeah, you're not so so knocking in. I saw the original books, the original guest list, yeah, of Skybar and the celebrity Just names every name on you could that. Imagine. To, they had to have their name to get in. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was a big, big, big deal. And I met everybody. I, I thought I've seen, I've seen them all. Yeah, everybody. I mean, Beckham, you name it. I get a phone call. I think it was CAA. Was uh well, you'll you'll confirm this in a second. I had a call from CAA, and they're like, "Hey, you know, hey, Chris, um." You know, we know you're close with the family, with Pat and everything. But yeah, sure. What do you got going on? We got a couple guys I want to get in. I'm like, yeah, who? how many guys? We got 10 guys. 10 dudes? Yeah. Who you are want, they? You want 10 dudes to come in to, to, <clears throat> to Skybar on a weekend? He's like, yeah, come on. Chris, could you, could you help us out? I'm like, look, Pat's been great to me. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll find a way to make it happen. I'll, 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 we'll figure it out. Yeah. I get a call. They go, hey, Chris, there's a bunch of guys here looking to see you. I'm like, okay, great. Must be the guys. I get there. And just, you know, 10 dudes. And I'm like, all right, guys, uh, you guys want to bottles like that? Like, no, eh, maybe we'll kind of figure it out. We just want to kind of come in. And they had like this kind of accent. I was like, all right, well, sure. Jeez, for great. CA, I'll, I'll do it for you guys. Yeah. You guys are, we'll, we'll get you guys taken care of. And, you know, I walk them in. Everyone's like, what are you doing? I'm like, it's a favor. I got to make it happen. Like, hey, Chris, fine, whatever. Just don't do this. Yeah. yeah. Like, I got to make it happen. So I sit them down there and anybody, that spoke English as a second language was like, oh my God, you just walked in Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. I was like, oh, I know shit. this is Dude, a soccer team. That I is knew it was not a soccer team. what I was expecting. I did not realize how huge. Yeah, he's not, the most famous not, person in the world. Not tall wise, but like just oh, he's how yoked. famous he was. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's oh, my God. I mean, I had Beckham. <laughs> no, we, we, we do the ESPYs there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I've, I've had everybody. He, This guy stopped traffic oh yeah no doubt and i had to call him security we had to put like have him in case so no one could get to him i mean girls would climb over bushes to try to get yeah. to him yeah did you call ca after this and be like how the fuck do you not tell yeah, me someone give me a heads i got up. 10 guys yeah. just like 10 dudes i don't know who he is 
I, mean, I have no like, clue who Cristiano Ronaldo is. I just feel like I would have, like, Derek, I'm looking at you. Like, how is someone not being like, I'm making a big deal of this? This is literally the biggest soccer player in the world. I had Mike Tyson, like, before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Heavyweight champ. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I didn't know who he was. Yeah. I mean, I, I've heard of soccer. I've seen it a couple times. Sure. World Travels. Yeah, but yeah. I didn't realize how, how big he was. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I, I cannot do this to the celebrity, so I will, I'll tell you off the record. Yeah. yeah. But this celebrity female walked in. He whistled. She looked at him. He looked at her. Gone. Gone. <laughs> Gone. Yes. Oh, let's yes. go. And, and in, in the tabloids, next day you see Cristiano Ronaldo walking out, same clothes, jacket over his shoulder, walking down the hill. I'm like, yep. 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 Thank but you. I, I cannot disclose who that person is yeah. on the record. I we'll do that off do that. the air. We'll yes. do that yes. off the air. Yeah. God that damn, that as well. So when you were working at these hotels, right, you did some like Oscar stuff too. Like you got people ready for <laughs> all their rooms and everything that's going on. Did you read this? I, uh, dude, I told you, you we homework. do our research, oh, bro. <laughs> we do it. <laughs> they know everything. So, okay. so. <laughs> you're doing all this stuff. I uh, Listen, you're not working there anymore. Yeah, oh, that, Give that, us some of the ghost it. stories here. Okay, so uh, I leave Skybar because the director of uh, Bob Gregson, who's the director of uh, food and beverage over at the Mondron at Skybar where I was, he became uh, the director of sales and marketing at W Hollywood. Okay. He's like, Nelly, you got to come with me. It's a new hotel, new build. You got to come with me. like, okay, great. So... Uh, I told my, my my boss Kendra at Skybar. I said, "Look, you know what? It's it's time for me to go." Mm-hmm. Um, another job opportunity came up, and you we were in tears because I love that place. That yeah. was my heart and soul. Yeah. And I left to go there to go to W Hollywood, and I'm working there. And I'm working there. I think my second shift was Oscar weekend. Fuck. Now, this hotel is huge. I mean, it's enormous. I think 344 rooms plus 150 some odd res- residences. Yeah. And the tunnels are catacombs. I mean, you don't know where you're going. And I was hired as the insider. The insider was a person who knew how to get in the clubs, restaurants, personalities. He can make anything happen. You know, the motto was whatever, whenever. Yeah. So I was that guy. And people tested me on that one. I bet. I mean, I got a request like, Mr. Whatever, whenever, huh? I'm like, yeah. He goes, I want to meet Lady Gaga. Okay, sure. And I- Made it happen. I knew Jay Leno's team. Did you really? And Lady Gaga was on Jay Leno when he was there. And all you got to do is you got to do, you know, check- you know, concert tours and yeah. anyone who come to LA has to do, you know, Jimmy Kimmel, they yeah. have to do Jay Leno, all those shows. And I called, you know, um, Jay Leno's team. I was like, look, you know, I got a, somebody who has to kind of be in the green room, maybe move past Lady Gaga. Is that possible? Yeah, Nelly for you, we'll make it happen. Sure. Sure enough. Dude, that is such a Jay flex. Leno, <laughs> green, it's a huge flex. flex. <laughs> green room, Lady Gaga, the whole thing. And this kid's like, I was gonna say, oh yeah. my god! And, and like you Whatever, said, clearly whenever. it was a test. Yeah. Like he was yeah. like, "This, all right, you can make anything happen. How about this?" And then yeah. you do it. That person's like, "What the fuck? How yeah. did this happen?" He's like, "What are you doing tomorrow?" I'm like, he's like, "I don't know." I go, well, well, yeah, I'll make a couple phone calls, yeah. make it yeah. happen for you. So, boom, that's how it happened. Unbelievable. So, back to the Oscars. Now, I'm hired just like Oscar weekend, and I'm in this huge, brand new hotel. Barely know where my office is. I don't even know what the rooms look like. You know, I got a brief tour and I'm assigned to all the celebrities. So <laughs> the limousines don't pick you up in front of the hotel. They go underground yeah. and there's a secret door and entrance to kind of get in, get in, get in, get out. And my first assignment was, oh, it's a green mile. Um, Tom Hanks. No, no, um, the, the, the female. Uh, oh, what's yeah, her name? Shit. Go yeah, anybody, anybody, anybody. She's gorgeous. Emily, research department, Green Mile. Oh, lead actress. Name? She was married, divorced. You're you're naming every actress she, she's ever yeah, she's Oh she's no, gorgeous. <laughs> oh, was it Green Mile? It was, no, it was the football, the football one, the big guy. Oh, Sandra Bullock. So, thank you. There you go. There, there you go. go. Blindside. 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 That's what it was. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry about that. You guys were like, ah. <laughs> so uh, no, I go up to her room, knock on the door. She opens up. Hi, uh, Miss Bullock. Like, yes. Uh, you ready to go? She's like, yes, I am. Here we go. And I'm like, okay, walk her in the elevator, goes underground, you know, yep. no one comes in, goes underground, get out of the elevator. Okay, so uh, let's get your car, get you all taken care of, and best of luck. Open a door. That's closet. Okay, great. One <laughs> oh, second no. here. Uh, we'll, we'll get this door here. Walked in the other hallway. That one's locked. <laughs> and now she's like, you've I've yeah. kidnapped. Yeah. Like, I've, I've kidnapped. And, and, Definitely, and she's, yeah. she's dressed up in her gown, yeah. the whole thing. I'm like, we got this. Got Open it. door. There's the SUV. Guy gets out, opens the door. I go, I wish the best of luck. I hope you win. The movie's fantastic. Do your thing. Yeah. She gets in the car. Gone. 
and wins. Yeah. And they go, okay, Chris, uh, next person you got to bring down um, for Avatar. Uh, Zoe uh, Zoe Saldana. Saldana, yeah. Zoe, Zoe, yeah, Zoe Saldana. Yeah. Whew. Oh my God, I was about to say it's maybe my yeah. biggest crush on her. Yeah, she's she's kind of hot. Yeah, yeah a, little a little bit. Bit. She's in my wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah. yeah a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I go up there and she's and she's a little nervous. She's like, you know, the Oscar whole thing. And I go, Hi, how are you? She's like, Good, good. I go, I'm Chris. I'm taking to your car. And she's like, Well, thank you very much. She's like, Are you ready? She goes, Give me a couple more minutes. I'll be ready. I'm like, Sure, no problem at all. She's doing all the hair and making all her touches. I go, Ready to go? She's like, Let's go. I'm confident now. Yeah, we got in it. In the elevator. Go downstairs, past the first door, past the second door. There's a magic door. Open up. SUV's there. A guy gets out. I go, best of luck. The movie was fantastic. Yeah. I wish you everything in the world. Gets in the car, drives away. Get a phone call. Yeah, Chris, you put uh, oh, Zoe in the wrong car, and you put Sandra Bullock in the wrong car. Oh. So when they come down, and the red carpet, you know, the license plate number is oh, like, shit. it's going to be Zoe Zalana, and Sandra Bullock gets out, and I was like, oh, oh. that's the wrong person. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Incredible. Jesus. It's like second Whoopsies. week on the job. Sorry. Second day. Yeah. Second day, yeah, on, the second day on the job. Oh my <laughs> God almighty. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, how Unbelievable. how much were you sweating at that moment? Like when you got that call, were you like, I'm gonna get fired? I was or, kinda like, it is what it is. I mean, yeah. what do you do? Hey, they got there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they yeah, at the it. Oscars. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, they live in LA. They stayed at the W because it's so close. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's an easy drive. Yeah. yeah, it's an easy drive there. So yeah, that's why they did it. Oh my god, that is so So they're all they're all packed up and they checked out that point in time. They were coming back like you made a mistake. It never happens. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now I want to talk to you about some some food, some cooking. Okay. Because my man, you are a chef. Yes. Yeah. I have are. seen this stuff. You got you put a separate page up. Overgrown kids eats right. Yes. Uh, yep. Dude, you're making oh, your own sushi, yep. your own pizza, yep. your own smash burgers. Yep. Have you always been a chef? How'd you get into this? Tell me everything. Oh, you guys are good. <laughs> <laughs> some good stuff. So back to Wisconsin. Yep. Um, this is the '90s and. <laughs> Nothing against the state or the school or the people, but there wasn't a lot of open mindedness. Yeah, at school. Sure, I thought a little bit of it. You know, being a, a person of color playing hockey, um, very alone. Yeah, there was a kid who was, I want to say, openly gay, but he he was clearly gay. Yeah, yeah. Um, in my Portuguese class, and he didn't have a study partner, so I was like. Dude, nothing phases me. I mean, study party? I'll do help you study all day long. Totally cool. My age is like, where are you going with this one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and I mean, we were cool. We became friends. His sister was the checkout girl at a gourmet grocery store. Oh, let's go. And she, Massive hookup. In and yeah. ma- and yeah. college. Oh, so my God. Huge. Portuguese food, too? Oof. Oh, no, no. Portuguese was the class. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, he wasn't. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, she was the just, she, she was just, she just, 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 so she's just at this grocery out, store. The grocery yeah, yeah. store. And she was so thankful that you no know, was friends with this with this guy because no one no one would be friends with him. She hooked me oh, up God. on groceries. College is probably one of the poorest points of your life. Yeah. I mean, even on a full scholarship, this is hockey. They're yeah. not giving you cars and money. No. It's like I got a W. I got, I, no, I got a Wisconsin pin. That was the gift <laughs> I got. You know. I'm Still not saying oh, I have no career. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying that you no know, some other athletes got better benefits, but I saw a but, lot but maybe, of they did. But maybe. I saw a lot of sports <laughs> here's, cars. Here's the situation where I will say it. Zipping yeah. around. Yeah. They definitely did. <laughs> you know? So this 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 girl hooked me up. And when you're the poorest point of your life, you can't go on dates. You can't go to restaurants. Oh yeah, so you start cooking. I start cooking, but here's the hook. How do you get a girl back to your place? Cook her dinner. Come over, have dinner. Yeah. And that was it. And she's like, wow. That worked on Emily. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Dude, Emily. I got all these gourmet ingredients. Yeah. I'm going to cook you a meal. She's got stars in her eyes yeah. with you right now. I mean, come no. on. <laughs> no, that does work. Yeah. That does work. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And, and, and that's really what it was. It was yeah. like, oh, you want to come over, have dinner? It's like, yeah, sure. She was expecting top ramen. I've got fillets. I've got <laughs> lobster. I yeah. got everything out there. She's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. Cost me. Nothing. Nothing. And cooking is trial and error. Yeah. I was gonna say, how'd you learn? But that's I messed how. up some dishes. Yeah. I never used a cookbook. Yeah. I mean, I was just like, okay, do this, do that, throw some salt, some sugar, the whole thing. Okay, great. Boom, here it is. And I just learned how to cook. And that was my thing. Is like I couldn't afford to yeah. you know, take girls out. So okay, great. We'll have 
you know, box wine in the fridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> little Franzia. Yeah. Little Franzia for the gals. Yeah. And you'll have, you know, the meal of your life. It pairs wonderfully with the filet. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, was, <laughs> so I had that Franzia filet combo is... Wow. I never knew that red wine wasn't supposed to be in the fridge. Oh, yeah. Never knew that. Yeah. Yeah. I chilled red. You're ahead that of your time, That was my go-to. Box yeah. red wine, the fridge, the yeah. tap down. I, yeah. Chris, oh, yeah. good point. I mean, dude, chilled red is all the rage in L.A. now. You're just ahead of your time. <laughs> yeah. You're 20 years yeah. ahead of your time. It's yeah. perfect. That's what it was. But, yeah, that's how I learned how to cook. And then, uh, you know, it's it's just stayed with me. Yeah. And now I live in the Arts District, mm -hmm. and, you know, we've got a Korean market there. And they've got foods I can't even pronounce. I mean, I have to look yep. through a dictionary. What the hell is this thing? I mean, you name it. They've got, I mean... Octopus, squid, lobster, king crab, Alaskan, well, Alaskan king crab, yeah. snow crab. They've got fair. They have everything there. Oh, I mean, it, it's it, it, the 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 fish area looks like you're in Pikes. Is a Pike Pikes yeah, Square? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, in in uh, Seattle, Seattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it looks like there. And you can get anything you want to sea urchin. It's all there. Yeah. So I learned how to make my sushi and in udon and ramen and all that kind of stuff. Dude, I've spent a lot of time in the Korean market in, yeah. the, or in the downtown Arts District area, and it's like every other corner you turn on, there's a little stand or a pop-up restaurant you can eat at. It's all the best food I've ever yeah. had in my life. I, mean, I live across the street from Bavel. Yeah. I, mean, right. I, I got Bavel right. there. I've got Girl and the Goat you know, 50 feet from me, and I've got Bessie down the street. Yeah. And it's, it's a little weird because it's like I don't want to go out to a restaurant, A, because the guy's supposed to pay it. I'm not dropping 400 bucks. I, I know, mean, man. For people that understand, LA is expensive. Oh, my God. I mean, the, out of control. The average date, if you just do a decent date, you're looking 350, 400. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll go to a Kings game. I'll have dinner afterwards. And I mean, you got to think about are you taking Uber or are you driving? Yeah. If you don't have to hook up with the parking, that's 25, 30 bucks, and you still got to hike to get there. Um, the Kings tickets. I work with the Kings, so I have you know, a deal with that, which is fantastic. But my seats are what a buck fifty a piece. Yeah. Yeah. Um Then you got to go and have dinner. I went to a place, um, Paris Tokyo, amazing, amazing sushi restaurant. It was like thirty five bucks a roll. Oh my god, dude! Yeah, get out of here. That's just unacceptable. And, get out of here. And, I, can't, and, I can't afford that. And, <laughs> and you're, you're, yes, you're paying for the food, for the atmosphere. I mean. I mean, there was a ton. It was a nightclub on steroids yep. that just served food. It was incredible in the heart of Beverly Hills. I can't afford that in a day to day out right. thing. So cook and when yeah. You, yeah, when you can cook like you can, why not? Why not yeah. do it at home? Do you have a yeah. Do you have a favorite a uh, favorite dish to cook? It all depends on how I feel. Yeah, it literally does. That. But it's kind of it's kind of weird. It's like you, you know, you meet a girl. I'm single now. Sure, you meet a girl. Hey, you know, come over and have dinner. We just met. And they're coming over. No, 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 oh, no, no. Right. I know that yeah. move. Like, no, I'm not a creep. I like, no. I just rather cook. Yeah, I, I plus you're gonna I love it. Not so, agree yeah, more man. Because yeah. when you get to a point with cooking too, I, with a lot of places, not every place, but I'm like, I'll cook a better meal than some of these restaurants. Oh, places. hands down. So hands uh, down. let's save eighty percent of what we would have spent at the restaurant and make an awesome home cooked meal. I'm yeah. so in with that. For what cost me four hundred bucks would cost me. 40. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, so, dude, I mean, it, it feels like you've lived a million lives with all of these different jobs. You haven't got to the movie stuff yet. I, I know. I can't so wait. We're going to get to that. But before we get to that, I want to talk about Locker Room 13. Okay. So, you know, just, just from outsider's perspective, Nelly over here has started this company that basically takes all of your equipment, all of your gear, washes it, cleans it, sharpens it, updates it, puts it in the locker room for you when you're about to play a game, picks it up afterwards, completely removes the lugging and the nonsense of hockey equipment. Tell us about how you came up with this idea and then where it's going. Because it's like, when we see it, you know, a lot of our listeners, people here play in LA, they play at Toyota Center, yep. so they've seen it. But for everyone around North America that listens, that's like this, I think this is one Genius. of the greatest yeah. ideas in the history of hockey. It, it You know, I, I saw a guy on a motorcycle with a hockey bag on his back. I go, <laughs> that's not safe. No. Um, Did he have his sticks tucked in? Like, no, they were, like, they were, they were up. Oh, up. Oh, no. yeah, like yeah, Leonardo like, with like two big, swords. Big eye, yeah, 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 the big eye. Yeah. So they were, they were, they were, they were uh, vertical. Um, so I saw that. I was talking to a guy that had to catch a red-eye flight and he's like, dude, I Ubered down here. And Toyota's right next to LAX. Yeah, right. He goes, what am I going to do with my gear? Um, I This happens all – I get a lot of my customers this way. Oh, I forgot my glove. Oh, dude, I didn't even think oh, about shit. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Guys, then you just got stuff. Yeah, and so I have you know, I have spare stuff. I've got my own gear. I, mean, yeah. I have no problem. If someone's using my gear, go yeah, for it. have it. So uh, stuff like that. And then some guys the, – the big thing is it's L.A. People got sports cars. Mm -hmm. You can't put your hockey bag in your no. sports car and then – after hockey, go on your date with all the gear in the back. 
So I created this company, uh, Lockroom 13, where we pick it up, we store, we clean, we inspect it, we sharpen your skates, deliver all that kind of fun stuff. And then this thing called the pandemic hit. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect time. Let me tell you yeah. about launching a business during a pandemic and all the rings closed down. Yeah. And then all these little secret skates start popping up. Mm -hmm. And I became the go-to guy for skate sharpening because you couldn't get your skate sharpened. All oh, the stores were closed. And, and there always... were so many of those secret skates. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then uh, with uh, uh, getting the gear, guys are like, okay, great. Now, I don't I, I don't drive the gear around California. I just deal with Toyota. But, you know, we've got the Bruckheimer group, the bad boys. Mm -hmm. We've got the CA group. Uh, we've, we now have an NHL skate like myself, Danny Heatley, a bunch of guys skating that. Yeah. That they're accustomed to a little higher standard. Mm -hmm. Boom. Well, this is my first customers right away. Yeah. Perfect. And that's how I launched into Lockroom 13. I was still trying to figure out my business model, what I want to do with it. Do I want to work, want to work with kids? Is it adults? Is it barely what's going to happen? The less experienced players are my number one clients. Makes those, perfect sense. Those are the ones that are like, they want to feel like an NHL player. They want to be treated like an NHL player. Yep. Yes. I mean, the guys, guys like Danny Heatley that are, our NHL superstars yeah, yeah. that obviously use my service. But some guys are just like, I've got a sports car. I don't want to leave my gear in there. I have a motorcycle. I can't get to and from. I have single-handedly saved marriages because guys live in the Abikini area. And you know you can't put your stuff in the backyard. Dude. It's stolen. Gone. No. I, I, I was about to friend. say, yeah. another huge element of this that I think makes it so genius is Think about everyone who lives in an apartment. Mm -hmm. Where the fuck do you keep your stuff? No, like, so thanks I, the whole place we, We've got guys who pe put keep their shit in their trunk of their car yeah. all hours of the day. Yep. It gets disgusting, makes your car stink. And then, yeah, yeah. we've got one of our, I mean, you know Kit on our yeah, team. Yeah, of course. He left his stuff drying out uh, at work down in Torrance at his office, stolen, right? Like really? in the middle yeah. of the day. Oh, and it's God. like, you just eliminate all that. And that doesn't even get into, and this is something I was very curious mm -hmm. about, is like where you guys are expanding to other cities and things like that. Because I think about guys in New York who try to play. It's a nightmare. You ever get out on the subway with a hockey bag? Dude, get out of here yeah, no i cast miracle when i cast miracle we were we did the, the auditions in, in uh new york yeah and i'm like how do these people get here and sure enough i'm on the subway you know going to uh I don't, it wasn't chelsea pierce there's another rink and these people have hockey bags and sticks i'm like i guess they're going to the audition yeah. and sure enough yeah. they got the train with us we walk a couple blocks and there, there it is uh i went out and looked at chelsea pierce and they've got a system where they have lockers and they're charging a lot of money for these lockers, and they are sold yeah, out. Yeah, yeah no but doubt. The problem is, and is the guy that gave the tour is like this place stinks because the gear doesn't get washed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here's the thing about beer league hockey: it's like, yeah, we all played hockey. It's all about the before the game, and after the game, telling stories, and it's called beer league hockey because we drink beer afterwards. Yep. yep. How do you do that at Chelsea Piers? Because you might be in this wing over here. You might oh, be in dude, that wing yeah. over there. Or some other guy doesn't have a locker. So everyone's kind of all spread out all over the place. Yeah. So and you even, don't even get that experience. So you don't get that experience. Yeah. Damn. So I, I flew out to New York. I looked at it. I had meetings. And I'm like, okay, great. I know how to do it. But I'm so busy right now with you know, with the, the film production. Yep. I just don't have time to do that. If things slow down, which... Derek's not gonna let me. My agent will not let us slow down. Yeah, <laughs> good, good job, Derek. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's uh, I, I do want to expand out there. Now I've got a strong line. Now I know how the business is supposed to run and what I want to do. And it, it's a lot of hands on at first to kind of get it going. I would need a good, you no, know, several, you no, know, three, four months to get it locked in, to for it to you no know, to be to where I want it to be. I couldn't yeah. just go here it is and let it run sure. yeah. run amok because. You know, once again, if, if you mess up with it, it it's it's a big issue. It's yeah. a real big issue, no doubt. And there's there's been some flaws, and we've we've learned learned through you know trial and error what works, what doesn't work. And there's some stuff that definitely does work, some stuff that definitely doesn't work. Yeah. And when you have that miss, it stings a little bit because it's my business, my company. I don't like to fail. Yeah, I mean, I do. There's nothing I'd be happier to plug because it's like, like I said, it is g genuinely mm -hmm. genius, and it's. It, when you get through those trial and error periods and you figure out what does and doesn't work, that's when it just starts to take off. So yeah. it's, it's so exciting to see yeah. it headed towards that direction. And it, it's, I mean, I, I was one man, it was a one man show. Yeah. And during COVID, it was okay, but there's not, not much going on. But now I'm so busy with all the stuff that I'm doing, you know, as far as this, this film industry, I've hired two more employees. Oh, there you good. Go. And yeah. the quality of life is incredible. Oh, that's great. I had two employees before and they were younger kids and they were great, but. You know, at 18, 19 years old, you're kind of all over the map. Sure. And now I've got, you know, two guys. One uh, plays junior hockey. Another one works, uh, uh, works, you know, for the Kings per se. Yeah. And, you know, in his off time, he's able to hit me out. And he, and he is so precise 
and what he does and so excellent as I can just I can go to bed and sleep at night, wake up oh, knowing that I'm not going to have any issues. Such a good yeah. feeling. Oh, it's great. Uh, so you touched on Miracle, perfect yep. transition into mm-hmm. the whole entertainment world, which mm-hmm. you are now completely immersed in. Yep. So you went into acting. You got you had roles on Baywatch, right? You were like doing stuff on Baywatch, Malcolm in the Middle, Bones. <laughs> and like then you get Miracle. So Everyone needs to know, like, what did you do on that? How was that experience? One of our yeah, favorite movies we'll, ever. So we'll, we'll, spare we'll, no we'll, detail. We'll, we'll, we'll go through the, the Baywatch stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I always had an interest in in. in Filmmaking, sure. In front of the camera, behind the camera, just anything that's involved with it. And I got a call from a coach of mine who was the technical advisor. He did a lot of stuff. He was the he was the me before me. And so I watched. His name was Jack White. And I watched him very closely. He did. Uh, he was a technical advisor on the original Ducks movies. Yep. I was the like skating instructor kid on the Ducks films. He was the technical advisor. Okay. And I was watched what he did very closely. I go, he's got a cool gig. He calls me up one day. He goes, "Hey, Chris, uh, I'm doing this the TV show. Do you want to be?" And I go, "Yeah, sure, absolutely. What I got? What I got to do?" He goes, "Well, you got to report down to Santa Monica at the beach um, at 6 a.m. and we'll put you in, you know, in a trailer and there'll be wardrobe and stuff like that in there for you and we'll come get you when we're ready." Okay, great. Drive down there 6 a.m. Sun's not even up yet, <laughs> and it's freezing cold at the beach. And they go, "Mr. Nelson, yes, yeah, okay, your trailer's right here. Feel free to go in." I'm like, okay, go in my trailer. I'm sitting there hanging out. About seven, seven thirty, get knock on the door. And they go, Mr. Nelson, we need you on set. Are you ready? I'm like, yeah. I come out, and it is like, what, 60 yeah. of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yes. And it, it was Baywatch. At the quad. Yeah. Baywatch was the first it. thing I'd ever done. I go, this is awesome. How do I do more of this yeah. type of work? And I asked Jasmine Bleeth and Alexandra Paul. I go, how do you do this? How do? And they were like, listen, kid. You know, yeah. I, was, I was young back then. Of I go, course. Um, you got to get an agent. Oh, okay, an agent. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll do that. Thanks a lot. All right, good talking, yeah. you guys. Didn't know anything about the industry. Yeah. yeah. Um, yellow pages because there's no Google. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's no, hey Siri, show me an agency. It was like you go and kind of go through it. And I'm like, oh, this agency, Bobby Ball. So uh, I look through Bobby Ball agency and to make a long story short, I go down there. I don't know anything about it. He looks at me. He's like, you play hockey? I'm like, yeah, are you any good? He's like, yeah, I'm pretty good. Yeah, yeah, actually, I am. I'm sends, half decent. Yeah. Sends me an audition, uh, national commercial, audition, callback, book it. Another audition, audition, callback, book it. I go, this is great. I yeah, love this. game's easy. It's so easy. This is fantastic. Yeah. And that's how I just kind of segued into it. So you go, you take that, then uh, and I did Batman and Robin, mm-hmm. which was the Mark Hardy incident. Um, Harpo was a great friend of mine, yep. great coach, yep. great player. Uh, he was what our, he was my coach for my final season with the Blades, and I was late to practice one day because I had an audition. And he was like, what are you doing? I go, what do you mean? He goes, why are you late? I go, I had an audition. I go, to audition? Are you a hockey player or do you want to be one of these actors? I'm like, well. <laughs> Love to be both. It's a, <laughs> Actually, one of these actors. It's, it's roller hockey. Yeah. <laughs> and we're playing the Bullfrogs, and they're pretty good. Yeah. And so we, we might not beat them. I didn't say that, but I'm thinking yeah, we might yeah, beat yeah. them. He's like, well, you know what, Nelly? You're out. Healthy scratch. Okay, yeah. playoff game, healthy scratch. We lost. Yep. That was it. Yeah. I go back to Batman and Robin, have another audition, and they go, you skate amazing. skate like a win. Do you know anybody else that skates like you? I have a whole team. Yep. So I call up all the boys, like, dude, guys, I just booked us a gig. Like, what do you got going on? Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin What's down. that? It's a Batman with Robin. It's yeah. a movie. You go, what do you mean? We're shooting at Warner Brothers. Get here. Yeah. They all went up. They go, all approved. They're great. And I had all my boys, and we were doing Batman and Robin with George yeah. Clooney, O'Donnell, yeah. Schwarzenegger, and we were zipping around. It was the biggest badass movie of the year. Kind of hokey when it came out, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but we were studs. I mean, yeah. we were on the set of Friends. Clooney was so hot on ER, yeah. so we were just—I mean, we were all our Warner Brothers. We were—we had a blast. Yeah, it was it, huge. It was a playground for us. Unbelievable. So, did that. Now, cut to Miracle. And now I'm, I've been—I've done a bunch of commercials, TV shows, and stuff. And my, my career is kind of building. And I get a phone call, and they go, "Hey, is this Chris?" I'm like, "Yeah, Chris. Uh, do you?" Have any interest in doing a, a hockey movie called Miracle? I'm like, you mean like the NHA team? Like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'd love to do it. Okay, great. Come down. We'll have a meeting. So I met them at the Shangri La uh, Hotel. Sure. And they go, great. We love your stuff. We're going to bring you in. You're going to meet with all the Disney people at the Lowe's Hotel. Great. Uh, next day, perfect. Come to the Lowe's Hotel. And they're outside, you know, the, the conference room. They say, hey, Chris, uh, you know, just ask a couple questions, you know, to Coach Brooks. He's in there and some other people. Um. Uh, who's, who's the leader? Kurt, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. Thank yeah. you. And Kurt Russell. You know, just just kind of, we want to see how the report is going to go. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Sure. No problem. Now they did the research, but I don't know if they really did their research. Research. Mm-hmm. So 
when someone says, Mr. Nelson, ready for you, I open up the door and there's this huge oak table and you have all the heads and the, you have the, their assistants and their assistants' assistants. This is Disney. This yeah. is a big deal. Yeah. And they go, okay, well, this is Chris Nelson. We're going to have him, um, you know, we're interested in having him as a technical advisor for Miracle. So, Chris, do you have any any words you want to say? And I said, well, you know, I played in some, some pro hockey, I played some real hockey and did some stuff. They go, great. Uh, do you have any questions, you know, for anybody in the room? I go, yeah, Coach Brooks. Um, I have a question for you. And he looks up and he looks at me kind of weird. And he's like, okay, what's this song? Yeah. And he goes, I go, Coach Brooks, where did you come up with the drop passes and the weave and the continual flow of motion with the skating? And he, and everyone's like, you know, just kind of typing away, not really paying attention. He goes, Nelly, you played for me in New Jersey. <laughs> You're a devil. <laughs> I coached you. I coached you on the U.S. national teams, on the Select 16 teams. Why are you asking me that kind of question? I go, well, look, you and I know each other very well, but everybody else in the room doesn't really know how he came up with that. He goes, well, what Nelly's talking about is, and he went on this whole dialogue yeah, about yeah. what I was, that, the question was about. Yeah. And everyone was like, oh my God. Oh shit. And Kurt Russell goes, oh yeah, by the way, yeah, Katie, Nelly and him were great friends. He, he coached my son. Nelly's cool with me. He's great. Yeah. yeah. And they go, okay, great. Thanks a lot. Chris, you know, please step out of the room and we'll contact you in a moment. Just hang tight for a bit. Yeah. Went outside. How long? Ten seconds <laughs> yeah. later. Uh, so, Mr. Nelson, uh, when do you want to begin? Uh, whenever. Okay, great. We have an office for you all set up. It's on Arizona. Let's we'll get go, your stuff. We'll dude. kind of pick up your stuff, and we'll get you all taken care of, get you all dialed in, and boom. That was it. Miracle. Unreal. Two years of hand, of handpicking yeah, all those kids. Um, I mean, we handpicked for their looks, the way they shot, their accent, Everything. Sure. The last player we got was the Mike Ruzzoni. Yeah. Um, Patrick Dempsey. Yeah. And uh, we couldn't find a right, uh, I'm sorry, a left handed Boston kid with that look. He was the last kid that came across. Get out. And, you know, he, I was like, okay, great. So talk about yourself. You know, he had the accent, yeah. he had the look. I was like, please, which way do you shoot? Yeah, yeah you, come on. I shoot left. Yes, Dang, like this. yes, we're in. Like you got it. Yeah. I mean, well, hold on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and and that was it. And I mean, just a magical experience. And whole time, the whole time. Yeah. And when I do a movie, like TV shows are different. When I do a movie, I do so much pre prep that when by the time we get there, I'm just training the players of the plays, and so it's two hour practice. Yeah. Cuba Gooding Jr. told me this once. He goes, when you do a movie. In Canada, you want to be A, from Los Angeles, B, let it be a hockey movie, C, be a hockey player, and the, where am I at now? D was uh, be someone that can make changes, make moves on it. Mm -hmm. I was that guy. Yeah. yeah. Wisconsin was a great four years. When you have control of bringing in 4,000 extras- <laughs> and who does extra? Who's the time to do extra work? You're not in corporate, no Canada. Yeah. You are a bartender. Mm -hmm. You are a waitress. You a podcaster. A podcaster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and waitresses in Canada tend to be extremely attractive. Yeah. Um, Earl's on top. You know all those restaurants. And I got to know everybody. I was literally the mayor of Vancouver. And I knew everybody. Oh, damn. And my boss is like, dude, how do you do this? I go, the plays are done. Yep. All the hard work was done. I just need to teach these guys where to go and the cameras or how to shoot and focal points and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. God damn. Incredible experience. Yeah. And uh, clearly you're still doing it because- Yeah, get, so, you know. so to fast forward a little bit, then the the hockey franchise calls, the Mighty Ducks. Yes. And you get season two game changers on Disney Plus. You're doing the same stuff there, advising, taking them through uh, you know, hockey classes, hockey camp, yeah. uh, choreographing all the scenes and everything. You're part of the Ducks well, canon forever, dude. This well, is legendary. I, I had just I had just shot your piss of mine. Yeah. So we shot that I think in September. Then I did that huge T Mobile uh commercial. Dude, by the way, I have a fucking gripe with you. <laughs> okay. I auditioned for that. You didn't get it. No, nope. clearly not, dude. <laughs> clearly not. I had to do a vivid seats hockey commercial because I didn't get that one. But like, I know when we're going up for the same hockey commercials, and I like, I find out Nelly's been there. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm fucking I'm not dead. getting this. No, one. no, no, no. That's not true. 
Because you and I aren't competing for the same job. That's true, actually. Yeah. We could be in it together. They're never going to go, God, do we take a white guy or a black guy? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. It never happens. Yeah. Let me ask you. For, so for, for the listeners here, this is a T-Mobile commercial where you're like playing with a pool noodle. Yeah, taking yeah. a face off. When you did your audition, mm-hmm. what did you use as a pool? Did you have a pool noodle? You're you going to remember who you're talking to yeah. here, okay? I can write. Yeah. I can direct. I, I know. I can act. Oh, I can, you sent I can it. edit. Oh, you son of a he bitch. Oh, no, no, no. It, 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 oh. it, it, it gets, it gets, you're really going to be upset about yeah. this. So I call up a buddy of mine, Mark Huber, uh-huh. a really, really great friend of mine. And I go, hey, I got this audition. You know, do you want to audition with me? He's like, yeah, sure, absolutely. I bring in background. Oh, I bring shit. in pool noodles. I write storyboards, everything yeah. for this audition. I was going to say, they didn't even shoot the commercial. They just yeah, used yeah, yeah, his yeah. audition oh, video. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so we... We do the audition, send it in, book it, yeah, naturally, and the ad agency was like, "Who are you?" Yeah, I go, "What do you mean?" He goes, "We've never seen, and in our history of doing advertisements and audition, that good." Yeah. I was like, "I look at these things for a living. I yeah. mean, I, I look at a script and go, here's what the script means, here's what it says, here's what they need to see, done,' and I just know." instinctly how to do that they went shot for shot with my mother. audition for the commercial okay i know i don't feel as so bad I, will, I, will, I will show you my demo <laughs> yeah do it it please. is you want to see it now no 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 okay. show me out yeah. it is literally shot for shot dan, dan feels so defeated yeah. <laughs> no i feel much better now because if i uh, now that i know that I, I i just didn't work hard enough dude. But, i didn't put my reps in but, but it's, i was it's, like it's, how do i be more like but, him? but, but, it, but it's, <laughs> it's not even that it's like i'm really good in the room too yeah 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 because yeah. no doubt he's course, that guy national championship wisconsin you no know, fifth round draft put by the devils played pro what did this all these things and you know i'm really really good in the room and i'm really good at creating things that when i audition people will literally wait for me if it's a hockey audition mm-hmm. they know i'm going to be there yeah they wait for me to show up i sign in and they sign in right after me because they know i'm not trying to take your job because it's never going to be you versus me. It's going to be either they want a black guy or they want a white guy. But nine times out of ten, it's both of us. Yeah. And if you guys are competing for a job, you guys might be boys. Yep. But we're talking forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars here. Boys are boys, but yeah, you, you kind of want that new car. Yeah, I want to take a gig. <laughs> and you might kick him in the shins one day. You know, might yeah. step on his lines, whatever. Not consciously, but in your, it's always in your mind. That's never in my mind. Yeah. Because I'm doing everything I can to help out the person who I'm auditioning with. Because yeah. I know if I get a call back, I've got a really good chance of getting Of course. Because that, there's a call back. That's on the ice. That's skating. They already like me. Yeah. The ice, that's a whole different thing. I'm going tear, tear it apart out there. So I'm just, I want to just make sure the person that's with me is cool and comfortable. So I'll do everything I possibly can. And I'll start going through actions with the person before we even do the audition. Let's go, here's what we're going to do. It says there's going to be a hit. This is going to happen. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Okay. What's going to happen is I'm going to come at you hard. You go down all fours and I'll flip up over you because I'm a stunt guy. Yeah. yeah. And we're doing this in a room about this size. And I'll tell the you know, the, the guy with the camera, go, look, uh, try to keep it wide from here to here. He's like, dude, you're telling me what to do. I'm like, just trust where you're actually yeah. You're going to stay in. It's like, okay, great. It's like, here from here to here. And here's what we're going to do. It's like, okay, great. All right, so tell about yourself. Slate the names, the whole thing, okay? And action. And we're tussling the boards, tussling the boards. I take a step back, I go after them, boom. Head over heels, boom, land on my back. And the whole room's like, boom. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, oh like, my What's God. What's our insurance policy? And he's like, we got it, yeah. we got it perfectly. Yeah. He's like, they didn't sign a hold harmless. Yeah. What happened yeah. here right now? But I mean, that, that's how these auditions work. Yeah. And you know, usually anyone who auditions with me is going to get the job with me. And it's just this, I have a ton of friends. And now that with my company, Hockey for Hollywood, yeah. we've gotten so big now that they'll call me directly, they'll call CA directly. And, you know, they'll say, okay, we need 10 guys. And it's boom, 10 guys, here we go, right yeah. off the bat. And if they want to audition, they can audition them, but they don't really have to because I have real, I have tape on everybody. Sure. So I have everyone's self tape from all the stuff that we've done before because everyone's self tape now due to COVID. So I have all the self tapes, I have them skating, I have a file of everybody. And I can just submit it, and they go, great, great, we'll take those five. Boom, done. And there you go. And that's it. Unbelievable. So, you, I mean, 
go from you're working on Mighty Ducks right now. Mm-hmm. You are obviously in your place or mine yep. Netflix movie right now with Ashton Kutcher and Reese Witherspoon. You've just touched on you're doing all this stuff, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. What's what's the next frontier of everything you're already doing that you want to do more? Do you want to get behind the camera? Do you want to direct something next, or or what? What kind of calls and, to and, the most? And tell us more about hockey for Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. So the it, it's really kind of weird because I've always been a camera operator because I write these plays and these scenes, and I never got the credit for it. But who can skate full speed with a you know forty fifty pound camera? forwards, backwards, stop on a dime, can hold that thing up. Not many people can and mm-hmm. you know, keep the proper focal length. Not many people can. So I've, I've always been that guy. Who's the guy giving direction to where the players go? You know, who's the guy giving the terminology of what they say? It's always you know, me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's a writer, there's a producer, there's a director, there's always people, but I'm the one who's always kind of supporting them. I never really got the credit for it, but I'm the one. It's, like, it's almost like an... An, an unpaid internship. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've worked with Schumacher, Penelope Spheris, Guy Ritchie, um, Rama Mosley, uh, Lee, uh, Brosh McKenna, mm-hmm. uh, your place of mine. I mean, it just goes on and on Damn. and on. It's just, it's, it's all, just a list of people. Mark Pellington, who did, you know, he did that Jeremy video with um, uh, Pearl Jam. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked yeah. with him. I mean, he just did the video, then I did a commercial with him. So I know, I've watched and studied all these people. So I know how to do it. I just never got the credit because of unions. You know, you got to be local 600, oh, yeah, the GGA, all that stuff. It. It's nuts. And now I've done so much work that people are like, hey, you know what? We're going to have you be a producer. We're going to push for you to be a director. We're going to have you do this, that. And so now all these doors are really opening up for me, which is incredible. So yeah, I want to produce. I want, I'm already producing. I have a, I have a production company, which is Hockey for Hollywood. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to direct. Um, the problem having with the directing is it's hard to let that hockey go. I bet. The technical advising, because, you know, if I'm directing a movie, not trying to brag, but who's going to do that hockey stuff the way I do it in my vision? Yeah. So it's going to be tricky because I've got, you know, a project coming up that I can't really announce, but I'll be be directing that. So that's going to be a hurdle I have to come over. I'll I'll just have to, you know, prep all that stuff way in advance to like literally like, here you go. Yeah. It's right here for you. You can't mess it up. For sure. Because I'll be concentrating with this stuff over here. You just make sure the hockey guys are all set, good to go. Because when I call action, we're we're yeah. rocking and rolling. Yeah. And so that's that's the it's a hurdle I, I need to kind of kind of fight through to get over. Yeah. But uh, because I've been doing it for so long, but I mean all the other stuff I've been doing it, God, since '96. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, you know, for a long, long time. Dude, wave us in. We'll take care of the technical yeah. shit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there you sure. Go. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Fucking love it. Um. All right. Well, dude, before we let you go, we want to play a game we play with all our guests. Okay. It's called Pass Shoot Score. Yep. What we're going to do is we're going to present you with three things okay. that we know are something in your life that you have an opinion on or really enjoy. Emily Rodrakowski. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe, Zoe Saldana. And, uh, oh, oh, oh that's, a, that's a different game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we'll do that one later. Is it like kill, marry? <laughs> yeah, 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 marry, fuck, kill. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of like that. So it's just like a ranking system. So it's going to be pass. Pass is going to be one the one that, you know, it's like making pass around the ice. That's good, but yep. we, we don't love it the most. Yep. Shooting, that's yep. more where it's at. That's yep. how you get on the score sheet. Yep. And then score is the ultimate goal. Got so it. it's going to be in that order of ranking. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. You ready? First one. Yep. TV shows, okay? Mm-hmm. Pass, shoot, score, Ozark, Homeland, Narcos. God, you guys are tough, dude. <laughs> tough. My first acting gig was was with Jason Bateman. Was oh, it really? My first acting gig, yeah. We did On what? A TV show called Simon. Wow, oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so, so oh, as uh, uh, Jason Bateman, him and I are, are in our scenes, you know, doing our dialogue together. Um, so pretty close to him with Ozark. Uh, then you've got Narcos, which one of my battle Bellman that uh, is on that show when I was the W. Mm-hmm. He said, "Hey, you know, as I was, I was his boss. He, I was his direct report. He's like, hey, I've got this TV show. Can I get a couple you know, months off?" And HR was like, "No, you, he's got to work. He's got to stay. Like, he's a Bellman. Yeah, he's also an actor. Do you think he's going to stay here to be a Bellman when he's actually booked a gig?" So yeah, the gig he booked was Narcos. Yeah. So that's pretty cool to me. Um, he was he would hit a character. I, I don't know what his name was in the character. It wasn't one of the leads. It was one of the support guys. Sure, sure. But he was he's like the guy next to the guy. So yeah. sick. And has all those lines. Yeah. And, and I think he was in Narcos. It was Narcos Mexico. It was, it was they have like four different yeah seasons. yeah yeah so correct. Many now. He was the, one of the guys that didn't get killed. Okay. I, I think um, nice. I, f- I forgot what the uh, what the character's name, but but he had a huge role in that yeah, one. That's awesome. So he did that one great. So Narcos is close to me. What was the third one? Uh, Homeland. <sighs> okay, so Homeland. 
Um, story about that one. Oh yeah, okay, we'll, we'll go to that one. Yeah, you'll like this one. Um, uh, the the the, uh, the lead actor. Help me out here, guys. Uh, Damian Lewis. No, 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 no. The or... the, the, the president. No. Oh, not hold on. Sorry. The, You're I was thinking, thinking about House of Cards. Oh, 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 yeah, oh Spacey. Yeah. Yes, because Spacey. So, Dude, um, we got a Spacey I'll story. I'll take a Spacey story, story. story. Yeah. on camera too. Yeah. Actually, we'll, we'll, we'll do a Spacey. We'll do a Spacey story. Yeah. So, Homeland. I got Showtime just for Homeland. Yeah. Dude, uh, same. Which was incredible. I saw you say that you were canceling Showtime once Homeland ended. You were yeah. like, "All right, I'm done." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't been back since. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Homeland was incredible. Yeah, um, I gotta say, score, score, score. All okay, oh, shit. first time ever. I, that is the first I, I time to, ever. I have to go because Just love them all. Hands down. Yeah. Um, I, I've watched you no know, some shows. I'm not a huge, huge, huge watcher, but I've watched Ozark three times. Yep. Um, I've watched uh, House of Cards. I mean, I've watched um, Ozark three, four times. Yeah. I, I've watched Home. I've watched all of them. Yeah, yeah. they're so um, good, dude. And then, you got good taste. It was yes, nice, sir. Yeah. Saw you like those three. I was like, nice. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it was. You know what's up. It's it's those are the. If you haven't watched those shows, you gotta watch. You gotta them. watch. Those Put them on yeah. your list. Yeah, you have to. You're you're an idiot not to. Okay, so that's a score, score, score. Yep. All right. So your next one, we're going transportation around LA. Yep. And others. All right, pass shoot score. Mm-hmm. Flying first class in Delta. <laughs> Ripping a scooter around LA on a nice sunny day. Okay. Or driving around in a 74 Ford Bronco. Yeah, you guys do your research. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 74 uh, Ford Bronco. Love the car. Beautiful car. Uh, convertible. Thing broke down all the time. That's really? what I've heard. That's what I've <laughs> all heard. All the time. <laughs> I bought that thing for fifteen thousand dollars. I put another seven thousand into it, sold it for thirty eight thousand. Let's go. Love it. Go right. on. Um how, so how, 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 Woodstock. are you passing that one? Well, I just bought a Defender one ten. Oh shit. And having it completely rebuilt with a Corvette engine inside of oh, it. Oh shit. So, <laughs> oh yeah. shit. So So we might pass the Bronco. So but wait, how did, how gonna, did Woodstock get it get his name? Woodstock. I think it was my wife at the time. I think she called it Woodstock. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. She, she thought Woodstock and yeah. go, that's fitting. Yeah. Sounds good. Run, yeah. Run with it. So I got a pass on the Bronco. Yep. Great car. And there's some satisfaction from passing. Yep. Yeah. You know, if, someone, if someone scores, yeah, it's not terrible. It's, on that. it's, it's not really terrible. nice. Get a little apple. So yeah, we'll pass the Bronco. Okay. Um, what was the next one? Scootering around LA in a sunny day and then flying first class Delta. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The scooter on a sunny day. I don't know where you guys got that one from, but I live in the Arch District. Scooter around, scooting fantastic. around all the time. Yeah, uh, it's it's super. I went on an amazing date. Um, a scooter date. A scooter date. Yes. Do I have to a add scooter, date? scooter dates? To Maybe. My, yeah. God damn. Uh, because I mean, you can't take two scooters. Yeah. You go oh, with one yeah. scooter. You got to go so, tandem. Yeah. Went, went on a tandem scooter. Amazing, amazing experience. Yeah. Uh, can't get any details with that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fair. But uh, we'll do that off air. Off air. Absolutely <laughs> amazing, amazing experience. Uh, and then we have flying first class on Delta. Delta comes from, I was a huge, uh, United person, huge, huge United fan. Okay. This is what I'm curious about. Uh, yeah. Flew to Moscow. And if you haven't been to Russia, Russia is, has some of those beautiful women in the world, but I wasn't there for the women. I was there yep. <laughs> because I was playing hockey. Yeah. And I was playing hockey, like organized hockey. I was playing hockey because the owner of Gazprom uh-huh. was worth about 30 eight billion dollars like hey come on out and play hockey sure sure well, <laughs> let's do that <laughs> so i came out and played hockey which was an incredible experience and uh on the way back i had you know some vodka and stuff you know from from russia yeah, they're taking care of you and you no know, in the airports you walk before you walk in the airport they scan your bags yeah for bombs stuff like that and then you take your bags and you put them on this belt and you check in they go okay great Okay, fantastic. How many bags are checking? I'm checking these two bags and I have this carry on which has nothing in it. Yeah. No, yeah. never. Let's just check my stuff. Okay, great. Whew. Bags go. And she goes, Okay, you owe five hundred and eighteen dollars because your bags are overweight. I go, What do you mean they're overweight? Well, they were overweight by so many kilograms. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. We yeah, don't what? do kilograms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have no idea what that means. And they go, Here's this, here's this, you need to go pay this to go on your plane. I go, I have an empty backpack. I could. I had boots in there. Yeah, and stuff yeah. Like that I could easily transfer it in, which I could have taken, you know, thirty pounds, and that would have easy been fine. She says, "Well, the bags are now gone. You can't retrieve them back." And that was with a United uh, partner. And I go, "Okay, fine. 
never again. Yep. Yeah. And I burnt through all my United miles and then I became a Delta guy. Delta, it's a pricier airline, but it is the premier yeah. airline. Okay. And shit. With the American Express card that I have entrance into the Delta Sky Lounge. Let's go. <laughs> and yeah, I've been yeah. Oh, I've so, been in the Delta Sky Lounge. Just live there. Where dude. It's at. I go to Sun Valley, Idaho four or five times a year. There's a direct flight in United, uh, on United that goes right to Sun Valley. Yeah. No, 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 no. I take Delta. Yeah. And I fly first class because I was 290 some thousand miles yeah, with Delta yeah. and all the points and stuff. And I'm a platinum premier or whatever member of the yeah. thing, which is phenomenal. And I'll, I'll tell you that story. So but, you connect just so to fly I Delta? I connect to go from LA to Salt Lake. Because the lounge in Salt Lake is incredible. <laughs> I was gonna say extra long layover on purpose. Oh, he's like, find me the eight hour layover. Oh. Aggie move. Like, no, I actively get the layover so I can go to the Salt oh, Lake lounge. And it's so good. Sun Valley is a it is a great fun party town. And I, Bobby Fairley goes there all the time. And him yeah. and him and our boys, we're family. Yeah. Bobby and myself, and so he's always there. And I always go to visit you know Bobby there and all the bars and sure. And uh, do you do uh, Delta International ever? Like, are you flying? If oh yeah, oh, I, I Delta. I'm yeah. Delta. If it's not Delta, it's Air France. It's yeah. one of the partners. Yeah. So I'm always okay. Delta, uh, KLM, uh, Korean Air, whatever it may be. Let's go. The Delta Sky Lounge has an open bar. Oh, yeah. let's go. And oh, we need time. more of those in our lives. I'll, I'll take the 9 a.m. flight so I get my breakfast at LAX, and then I'll have like a three hour layover in Salt Lake and just get polluted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because vacation has started. Yeah. yeah. And, oh, yeah. And Sun Valley, it's like Vegas. You don't need a car, mm -hmm. you're an idiot to have a car there. All right. All right hit with Next the one a uh, little comfort food, little cheat meal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pass shoot score. Popeye's chicken, mm -hmm. In and Out Burger, Grumpies and Ketchum. Popeye's because I'm black? No, because you like it. I saw you posted a cheat meal on Popeye's. <laughs> we, we, we I love using media. that one. I love watching the expression wait, 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 on people. Why do you think I like Popeye's? <laughs> it's it's like when people say people. You know, I, I've done a gazillion interviews and they yeah. go, "So, Chris, what's it like being a black hockey player?" I go, "I've never been a white one, so I don't yeah, I couldn't tell you. I wouldn't, uh, <laughs> wouldn't know anything else." <laughs> um, I don't know where the Popeye's thing came from. Chicken's chicken. It is what it is. Okay. Uh, it's expensive. It's too expensive. Yeah, but KFC, Popeye's, Church's—that stuff's expensive. Too expensive. So, and I don't even cook it. I mean, it's like, yeah. that's, that's not my that's not my jam. So that's we'll pass that. Pass. Not even. Not even pass. That's, that's a healthy scratch. That's a, that's healthy a, scratch. A, that's a dump in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> on that one. That's yeah. even a pass. That's a dump and not dump and, like, yeah, dump, yeah, Popeye's yeah, chicken yeah. stock dump just went to the toilet. Yeah, down, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, so, out on Popeye's. So that one's done. Next one. In and Out Burger. And then your third one. In and Out Burger. I've had it too much. Okay. I, I've had. I've had I, I think it's overrated. Uh. I like it. He didn't like it. I Derek, like you it. don't like that answer. You wait. You do like it. Derek's my agent over there on the yeah, side, yeah, Derek. Yeah. No, uh, just kind of hanging out, listening to every single word, going, "God, don't say anything stupid. Yeah. Don't say oh, anything." Oh, like, you don't like in and out. It's so overrated. It's, it's, it, it could be overrated, but it's still good. It's still good. That's true. I just, I, I think it's like I'll go to Window or I'll go to Hi Ho, and it's so much better. Sorry. Here, here, here's here's my in and out thing. Okay, the burgers. Okay, the fries. Don't like them at all. We Agreed. need, we need what? Fries. But I'm I fries are trash. They're the fries. burgers they're good. Fresh? Yeah. No, no but I'm trash. telling you, this is like the only place that does cheese fries. To tell you, what are you talking about? When, I'll when, take you to get better cheese fries anywhere else in this city. Oh, it's garbage. You get oh, another empty promise. When, when I <laughs> when I was in hotels and I'm looking for employees, I poached in our burger like no other. That's so smart. Their that is team genius. is so really nice cool, and yeah. so well trained and so respectful. So if you need to poach and they work employees, hard. oh, yeah. they work hard. I mean, In-N-Out hooks them up. I was gonna say I, I read that it's one of them, the yeah. top fast food chains for yeah. employees. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. They take care of them, but they have the best. They deserve employees. it. Yeah. And <laughs> if you need to fill, if you need to fill a spot in the front desk or something of, like that, in and out boom, you, in and out. you you poach In and Out because they are, their employees are so well trained. So kudos In and Out for yeah, okay. their their employee retention and their training procedures. It is great. That's okay. awesome. Burgers, eh, fries, had it too much. No, thank you. Yep. I've had it too much. Yeah. Right. But yeah, uh, that's a. I'll, I'll, we'll shoot I'll, that I'll shoot that one. Okay, yeah. it got you. Grumpies. Yeah. Give me the secrets, dude. What do you get? Tell yeah. me. Tell Nelly's me getting it. emotional yeah. right now. Grumpies is. 
it's like a religious experience. Oh wow. wow. Um you you don't even have to be hungry and you go to Grumpy's. I know exactly what you And mean. it's not just the burger, it's the chicken burger, it's the fries. I go to Oktoberfest every single year. Dude. Every year. You guys want to go to Oktoberfest? I was yeah. right about to say, what are you doing next year for Oktoberfest? I, and well, how, how, what do we have to do to come what, with you what, and fly Delta what, first what's, class? What's, what's the start date on that one? Is it October 22nd? Is that pre-production or is that when we're filming? Pre. Pre? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Oktoberfest is, I think, the 20th, 21st of September. Yeah, that's right. If I'm not in pre-production, I'm not filming, I am there. Okay. You guys want to go? I was going to say, I'm marking that. Roll with me. Yeah. Because I've been to Germany a ton of times. I know what flight to take. I know how to get from the airport to the hotel. I know what hotel to stay in. Okay. I know what tent to go to. I have a table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going. I, I know where to get the clothes. Yeah. You get the clothes. It's a place uh, across from Costco in Huntington Beach. I forgot the name of it, but they have we'll authentic yeah, yeah, yeah. German Lederhosen. I'm in, dude. And I hear the Delta Sky Lounge in Munich is fucking yeah. fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's 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 the Lufthansa. Yeah. Oh so, shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, like, land. I'm not. I'm not drinking there. No. Do not pre-party at Oktoberfest. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be dead. Do not yes. do you it. Will, you will die there. No. You will be left no. to be buried there. No. I I I can do. Five, maybe six, and I'm good. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm i never good in math, but how many ounces are there in a liter? Oh, no idea. There's a three and a half, three and a half. Three and a half no. uh, there's three and a half beers, I think, in a liter. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. that sounds a little right. Yes. Like and something like 30, 30 something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And there's 33.814 there fluid ounces in a liter. Good. Pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good, Nelly. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. And their beer is stronger. Oh, yeah. So if you drink a liter of Budweiser, you're bloated. You're like, oh, yeah. oh, I'm done. This stuff is like, not that I've ever had it, but crack. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's like a Red Bull and a beer. And the beer is cold. It yeah. tastes fantastic. You put one of those down, I'm like, oh, it's Here we on. go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're in... At first, you feel weird because you're wearing like a Halloween costume. Yeah, you got a leader hosing on. You crush two steins yeah. and you're crinkled already. Yeah. And, and then like, all comes, right, here we go. And you, two or three, and then the kids leave. The younger kids. It's, it's the family at first. Yeah. The the adultish people, the sixties and seventies, they're gone. The eighteens and below, they're gone, and it's just us. Yeah. Right? And then going off. Purple rain comes on. <laughs> And you hear and then these, all bats are off. You dude. hear these Germans sing "Purple Rain," yeah. and the ABBA comes on, and you know, Dancing Queen, and people are singing and dancing. So, the beer makes it. Grumpy's beer is off the chain. Wow. Damn, it is just like Oktoberfest, and they give you these little half liter things. But you go there for the burgers. You go there for the. Beer, you go there for the fries. It's a trifecta right there. Yeah, and yep. the atmosphere. Yeah, that's a perfect beer. It is a no, it is a hole in the wall yeah. place. I mean, I have a license plate. I gave them my it's soul on ice. Yeah. License plate is up there. No it's way. right next to Bobby Fairley's dog from <laughs> Something About Mary yeah. in the full in the full cast. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, when yeah. He, when he throws the dog out the window, yeah. the next shot it's the cat the dog's yeah. the cast. That dog is at Grumpy's and my license plate is right next to it. It is there. Incredible. So oh. you got to hit Grumpy's. Yeah. I it mean, sounds like it hits every time. Every time. Yeah. It, okay. It's you land. Like I land, I go right from the hotel. I go put the bags upstairs, quick change of clothes. Hey, can I get right to Grumpy's? Yeah. Go right <laughs> oh. to Grumpy's and it's Shit. game yeah. on. All right. So that's the easiest. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Your last one fin to round it out. Pass shoot score. Your Mighty Ducks high tops. Mm -hmm. Frozone from the Incredibles. Or Hungarian police. Okay. I don't know where the Frozone comes from. I don't know where the Hungarian police comes from. No, no, not police. The dog. Oh, police. Okay. Yeah, I was yes. like, yeah, okay. Police. So, uh, the... No, Hungarian cop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I was like, all right. Uh, what, what's the guy? No, he comes out of the story. He's been arrested yeah. in Hungary oh, before. Who's They're the guy, so nice to Who's him. the guy in Romania that got busted? What's his name? The Oh. Um... Antoine Anthony, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Who is it? He's the guy who's like, women should be this and should be yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, fuck. Uh, Andrew, Andrew. Andrew, Tate. yeah. Andrew Tate. Oh, Andrew Tate. oh Andrew Tate. that's yeah. fucking yeah. 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 So, yeah, he... Oof. Anyways, yeah. 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 We'll, 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 skip we'll skip him. We'll skip that skip one. Him. Okay, pass. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, pass Tate. Pass Tate. Um, so, the Ducks 
uh, dunks were a gift for me for Mark. Okay. Because so he's like, they are fire. Yeah. He's we'll, like, we'll post yeah. a photo of that because yeah. they are so. He's sick. like, dude, thanks a lot, man. You hooked me up. This is a big gig. He goes, I grew up with the Mighty Ducks. And he showed me a picture of him. He must be like three years old. And he had a Ducks jersey on. And he's like, dude, this is a dream come true. My parents cannot believe I'm doing this show. This is for you. He got me a pair of dunks. I was like, dude, yeah, let's go. Do I wear them or do I hey, have the cast yeah, sign them? Yeah, like, put what them in a glass do with these things? Yeah. What'd you do? I wore them once or twice, but they're sitting on Special a shelf. Occasion, they're maybe. there. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I I think that's smart. Yeah. I, I, you gotta archive you, those. You, yeah. yeah, you can't. You can't do you can't, you can't do anything with no no no, no, yeah. no can't so, so they're they're like special occasions yeah things. yeah like no doubt. first day on a set okay boom all right in action that's yeah. it those shoes go right back in yeah place. yeah um so that's a definite score on the dunks um then we've got the Hungarian pulley yeah, yeah. I used to have dreads back in the day dude yeah, you had we, when you were on miracle yeah, so, and in the roller hockey picks you yeah. got that flow so, yeah flow. so <laughs> why not get a dog that matches your hair yeah so those that don't know hungarian pulleys are those dogs that look like mops it looks right? like yeah. a mop they yeah, literally look real. like a walking yeah. mop yeah. they grow they grow dreads yeah. and talk about when it, myself and that dog walk down the street Woo! You, i mean <laughs> you're being stopped by every it's human cool. yeah and then i got married yeah. so <laughs> and and my ex you know, she's my ex she's a wonderful person yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. it just didn't work out she's she's an incredible person we have two beautiful kids yeah yeah we have co-parenting her and I could not be any happier right now. Uh, I I mean, it, it's an incredible. Even during like the separation with the, the trial, the judge goes, "You guys get along so well. Yeah, like you what? should write a book. <laughs> yeah, on how like, to do you this. Sure, you want to do this? Yeah, I mean, you should stay together. Yeah, she was just like the, the judge was like, "This is you guys are incredible. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's awesome. I get along great with her family. Yeah. I get along great with her, and the kids are great. It's it's it just it just didn't work out. Yeah, was what it came down to. Yeah, she said you're getting too much attention. Cut your hair off." Cut the hair off. That was it. Um, and I was losing a little bit too. I was like, okay, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, whatever. It. Did it. But I still have the dog. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can't walk more than five feet. I believe it. Oh dude. my God, I love your dog. Cars stop, accidents, yeah. you know, people honking horns. <laughs> I mean, they, they have the dog's incredible. Yeah. And I found that dog on a random website somewhere in Sioux City, Iowa. And I hopped on a plane and flew from LA to. Uh, it wasn't Sioux City. It was like somewhere, the whatever state was next to it. And rented the car, drove down there, met the dog, loved the dog, drove back, hopped on the plane, and flew back. Yeah. And that dog and I were inseparable. Amazing. And that dog eats so much attention. Yeah, so I much bet. attention. So that's a definite. That's a top shelf water bottle. Yeah, that's a goal. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> love yeah, that. Right away. Two goals. There. And was it was there one more in there? Yeah, yeah. Frozen. It was from Frozen the from the Incredibles, and I'll tell you why. Okay. So Dan and I, we have Disney Plus, right? Yep. And when he goes on, you can pick a profile. Yes. And Dan loves Wally, so yeah. when he yep. goes on, I see little Wally yep. for Dan, yep. Yep. and I love Ratatouille, so there's a little rat right yep. there. Yep. And you posted an awesome picture of you and your kids watching Disney Plus, and I saw your dad icon was Frozen. It's Frozen. Incredibles. Frozen. I was like, that's. So awesome. I will be, I guarantee you, 100% for Halloween. I will be frozen for Halloween. <sighs> so I was hoping for. I, I will definitely that. be frozen for Halloween. Yeah. I mean, I've done Spider Man for my kids' birthdays. I've that done pick. the Moana you thing. You did um, uh, Mario. Yeah, I've done them yeah. all. I've done yeah. them all. I will be frozen for Halloween one day. Yeah. So good. Dude. So I just can't find a costume. Yeah. So they're hard to find. I well, mean, I feel like with the connections that we just got to hit up a costume designer and be like, make me a Frozen costume. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah 100%. Easy. We'll get you the, the, the glasses, the oh, yeah. helmet. Yeah. And you absolutely have to get a video. Yeah. video. Where's my super suit? There it is, dude. <laughs> Cruising down the ice. <laughs> this is a no The lack of costume is perfect at yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. I yeah. love yeah. that. I that will make that happen. Yeah. yeah. That absolutely. would be another triple score. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, yeah. God. Yeah. I love that movie so much. So when I saw you frozen, Frozone, I was like, oh, oh. that's perfect. Oh. Dude. That movie's great. So it's good. Why did it take so long for the second one to come out? I have no idea. I have no idea either. It's one of those things that's like well, something else recently. I mean, Toy Story three took forever to come yeah, out. Sometimes yeah. they just take their time. All right, now, dude, we've taken up like two hours of your time. <gasps> I got um, nothing to do. But before, I love it. <laughs> He's like, I uh, over five. More I have like hours. nine scripts to read. Yeah, <laughs> I got I a get production to that. going. The busiest on. guy I know. I have directors calling. Hey, so what do you think of the character development? I'm like, uh, oh god, I just had shoulder surgery, so I'm still a little bit whacked out right yeah. now. But I'll get to that. It, it's my the page turning <laughs> arm. The too. morphine drip. Yeah, yeah. the script. Yeah. yeah. In the background, it's like I have the scripts that read to me. Yeah, dude, that's a thing. Dude, uh, open chapter one. Yeah. 
Chapter one, we see Derek run down through the forest. I'm like, oh, I can't use that excuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right, well, but before we go, dude, do you have anything you want to plug? Anything you want to say, mention to the listeners before we bounce out of here? No, nah, dude. I mean, like, honestly, the last year has been absolutely yeah. incredible. Let's go. Cool. I mean, I, I've had, I've had, I've had a great life, and I'm very, I'm very fortunate. And I know I'm very fortunate yeah. because some people aren't as no don't have the same opportunities that I have, and I've literally bust my ass for everything. And my one message to people is like, you know, I've seen this with some of my peers and some of my friends, is that am I successful? Yeah, I'm successful. Am I happy? Yeah, I'm happy. But I worked my ass off. And I've been through the trenches with stuff. Um, I just uh, worked, the, this movie I'll be directing, I worked on the script. Uh, and I, I can't announce it yet. Yeah, sure. But I'll let you guys know when it does come out. And the writer... Uh, it's a story that's been, you know, in Detroit, the whole thing, these hockey players. And the writer and I have spent hours and hours and hours and hours. And uh, he said, is there anything you could add to this from your experiences? I told him some of the stories I went through with hockey being black. And he's like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, no, this happens. Yeah. And he put those stories in the movie. Let's go, dude. So, I mean... You think of like, have you ever seen Precious? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Precious hits hard. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, oh, I it, it's, it hits hard. This movie doesn't hit as hard because I don't want to like crush the audience. I don't want to come out with tears in their eyes of mm -hmm. sadness. But the stories that I told were so true to form. And I was always hope that the storytelling that I've done that can help out people that have watched me, that have grown to see my progress, who don't even know who I am yet, but are going to follow me at some point in time that no matter how hard it is that you're going through, no matter all the BS you've gone through, it's going to get better. It's always out there. It's always worse for somebody else out there. Mm -hmm. And it's really not that bad. You're going to be able to get through it because I've been through it. Yeah. I mean, I've seen friends get shot and killed. I've had friends overdose on drugs. I have friends, you know, lost their limbs because of drugs. I've... I've had friends I talked to on a Tuesday and they're gone on a Thursday. I've lost both my parents. I've gone through divorce. Um, I've gone through financial, you know, situations. And I just put my head down and said, look, you're going to find a way to make it. And I've made it. And this is literally the happiest I've ever been in my entire life. I've won national championships. Yeah. I've, I've met several presidents. I've been in the Oval Office. Um, I've traveled all over the world. Yeah. Um, I've, been the face and personality of hotel franchises. I've done some crazy, crazy stuff. This year has hands down been my favorite year. Let's go. I mean, my that agent pumps me up so much, yeah. dude. This dude here is is killing it for Beast. me. Yeah. You know, Derek, the CA, is absolutely killing it for me because I used to have to negotiate my own contracts. Yeah, and I came up with them with an idea. I said, "Look, you know what? It's hard for me to do these things." Because I have to negotiate my contract, and then the guy I'm fighting over, you know, dollars with, I have to see on set the next day. Right, yeah, it's not comfortable. Yeah, do what Derek has done for me has literally changed my life. He's done stuff that I never thought it was possible that I could ever possibly do, or if I could do it, it'd take me another twenty years and be in my seventies at that point. In yeah, time. yeah, yeah. He's like, "What do you think if we do this?" I go, "Yeah, great." He's like, "Yep, yo, we got it. Do done. it next month." <laughs> but he does it in a way. It's like, "How's your day going? My day's going well." So, a uh, couple things for you. Uh, so, you have a uh, podcast meeting today. Uh, you booked this, and you're producing this movie. Okay, all right, great. So, I'll see you today at three thirty. Yeah. <laughs> What? You're like, wait, 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 let's backtrack. Let's backtrack. <laughs> I'm doing what? Yeah, that movie we discussed that you know we discussed that 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 you read the script for. Yeah, you're producing that now. Yeah. Huh? Okay. And here's your contract. Oh, ooh, okay. ooh, ooh, I like that ooh. part. I like that part. I might not. I might be able to afford to go to a yeah. restaurant now. Those uh, <laughs> those zeros are really big decimal yeah. points, right? <laughs> no, those aren't extra zeros. Yeah. Holy shit! Lot, well, stick taps, yeah. Derek. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Let's fucking yeah. go, buddy. And yeah. and congrats, like Dan said, man. Haven't yeah, known dude. you for a few years now. It's been so fun watching you and rooting oh. for you for this process, dude. So just and, keep crushing it. And I got something down the pipeline that I got to bring these guys in on. Hundred percent. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we might have a little audition in March. Sick. Let's go. And I cannot tell you what it is. Okay. That's fine. I it'll like be surprise. it'll be the craziest thing you guys will ever be a part of. <laughs> I and love it, I'm a, I, I love that. You're gonna happen. be like, dude, this is unreal. Yeah. Unreal. And I cannot tell you what it is. 
That's okay. Because I've, I've never signed more NDAs on this <laughs> thing. They're literally like, you're going to have an audition for this, and everyone has to sign the NDA, but we can't tell them what to sign the NDA for. Uh, like, what? So, <laughs> so just take my word on this. Oh, I will, yeah. dude. If you get a phone call, well, not if, it's when you get a phone call, I'm like, here's what we're doing. Be at this location. Yeah. You're not auditioning against me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was my, okay. that was my next question. Sure I was going to ask that. Yeah. All right, now you're, I'm loose. I'm you're, ready. You're, you're going to get it. Yeah. You're, 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 you're oh, going to get it. I'll, I'll put a blindfold yeah. on and sign Hell yeah. And you're going to be like, this is the first time I swore this whole podcast. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Mom, this is what I'm fucking doing right now. Yeah. It is, it's not a movie. It's not a TV show. It is something that will gain you 10 billion followers on Instagram okay. once you post what it is. <laughs> it is, it is going to be insane. I love it. And it came across me randomly and you know, I pitched to Derek and Derek ran with it. Yeah. And he's like, yep, so yep, we're going to do this, we're going to do that and here's what's going to happen. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. And it's really going to happen and it has never been done in the history of sport. Anything. Never has. Yeah, wow. never this is fucking it. sick. Yeah, so what a perfect up. way to close this out. Uh, all right, dude. Well, I can't wait for that. Same. Uh, but this has been unbelievable, dude. Thank you so awesome. much for coming my on. Pleasure. And, I pleasure. Uh, shake my left hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right hand. Got you in the back hand. Yeah. Well, that's great stuff. All right, man. Good shit. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks yeah. for the time. We'll this, see you next time. This is absolutely awesome. Your research is impeccable. Oh, thank you, dude. I, <laughs> You missed a couple of things that, whew, thank God. <laughs> that's well, two. That's what we got next time you come back. Yeah. And oh, there goes my phone. My phone got lifted, and every phone number has now been stolen from these guys. Awesome. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Here we go. All right, oh, guys, beautiful. let's go. This is awesome. Hell thank yeah, guys. man. Thank you. Thank you.